Welcome to Listen here, Jack, how do I open a PDF? Uh, you get one of those programs that has like five, tr five um, Trojans in it, and that's how you do it. <laughs> your, your screen is amazing. You liking that? Yeah. So, uh, welcome. Audio okay? Yep. Let me make right. sure, is everyone okay with the audio? Do we need to turn them up or anything like that? Oh god, what was that? What Sorry, was already what? noises going on here. Here we go. So, um, welcome Mr. Medicker, or Jim, or whatever you'd like to be called. Or oh, Well, yeah, I mean, it's been five years. Yeah, I didn't think you'd remember me. Yeah, about five years, half a decade. How have things been? Good. I, well, I would say how have things been for you, but I've heard you've been sick. The ups and downs. Aside from that, uh, everything's good. It does sound like you've been getting better thanks to the power of Ralph's stupidity. Well, it, there is something about watching like a trash fire that really just does kind of reinvigorate you. Just how... sucks the energy, uh, energy back into your marrow, makes you a, a little bit more alive. So I guess that's uh, working in my favor. So how does it feel to know a grown man really, really need you to be his daddy? Uh, it's fucking. Uh, oh, wait, stupid. you're 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 uh, broadcasting on Twitch, right? Uh, yeah, but I can always delete it if you say anything wrong. Give me one minute. They're saying you're too low. Let me just turn you up on my end. Okay, you should be good. We better. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to avoid the super. I know Twitch is very. Uh. <laughs> very just... restrictive on what you can say and not but um it's weird uh yeah he's got like a i don't know if it's like a daddy fixation or what but i i seem to attract that mentality i kind of had that happen with uh coach red pill too which is very bizarre now i've i've heard today that that coach is either missing or dead do you what what's going on with that <laughs> well i mean he was doing war correspondence over in uh ukraine um, but he was doing like Russian propaganda while they were being attacked. So I don't think his neighbors liked it. Um, probably not, you know, getting bombed. And then the guy next door is like, hey, this is great. Uh, and then he disappeared for like two days. So I don't know if he's like dead or missing or what. Nobody knows where he is. He's not on Telegram or YouTube. Now people are saying, oh, well, you know, he's alive, but he's not talking to anybody. His internet's out. His phone's out. I don't know. I'm sure he'll pop up. <laughs> he'll pop up somewhere eventually. Maybe he's learned to finally shut up and go into the basement? Uh maybe. Maybe his wife smacked him and was like, You've gotta stop, or we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna disappear if you don't. Speaking of basements, I've had a bunch of people already ask me to ask you this. The mm -hmm. picture you showed of the anime dungeon, is it really yours or is it one you found off the net? No, that that is legitimately mine. <laughs> you have a nice anime dungeon, I will admit that. Yeah, I, I like it nice and comfortable. I mean, I've got my uh, you know gaming collection, and then uh, the anime and stuff that I watch, uh, the manga, board games, all that kind of stuff, kind of wrap around. I mean, you don't you don't see the whole room because it wraps around. It's like an L shape. Oh, that's um, but cool. there's like you know a second couch and like a a table that comes out, and you can like open it up to play board games with like four to eight people if you wanted to do that. Full on nerd heaven. And so where is Jade's cage hidden in there? Are you finally letting her stay out of the cage since you married her? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I had to. It was a compromise. And just like having to share uh, shelf space <laughs> for like <laughs> anime and stuff. So I, I had no choice on that. So we know your favorite kinds of anime. What is her favorite kind since we never get to talk to her? Uh, she really likes My Hero Academia. I like she's really, really into that for some reason. Um, and she likes the stuff she grew up with or, you know, kind of like, I guess, 90s stuff, early aughts. So Sailor Moon. I mean, you wouldn't really call it Digimon. Well, I mean, I guess Digimon, um, Slice of Life stuff, that kind of shit. I I'm more into like sports anime. Um, I like horror stuff. Um, and of course, uh, Isekai, Iseki, however, you I can't pronounce it, right? Yeah, because every time you think you've got it right, you've got some weeaboo going, mm, that's not how you say it. Oh, no, no, just because I'm terrible at saying things. I mean, <laughs> I, I, instead of saying hyperbole, I say hyperbole. So I, I butcher shit anyway. 
Uh, but yeah, no. So like, uh, you know, a second stuff like that. I don't feel bad if you if you want to hear about people getting mad whenever I say Louisiana, people get really mad. I see somebody in your chat said uh, psychopaths. That's really good. I actually got around to watching season one of that. That was fantastic. Have you tried the game yet? It's actually pretty fun. Oh, uh, you're talking about like the uh, the VN? Yeah. Or you don't uh, like VNs? No, I, I actually have a VN. I just haven't had a chance to play it. Well, if you like horror uh, VNs, I will suggest um, Seiya no Uta, Song of Seiya. It's really fucked up, but really, uh, really good. I, I'm almost 100% certain that the little one you're talking about. Are you talking about the one where the uh, the dude has the brain injury and runs, it, it, like, dates the ultra chore? Is that what yes, we're talking about? Yes, 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 yes. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that that actually is really good. See, someone else that liked it. I actually got uh, in trouble on Pornhub for that one because it was too dark for there. Well, it's it's like you know, it's like this Chithulian like nightmare scenario where even like the good ending is bad. You know what I mean? And it, it's just a very weird story. I think that's what makes it good is that it's so just bizarre. You know, if he hadn't. A, uh, you know, spoiler alerts, but if he hadn't had, like, the trauma that he had, um, he would have turned into a wreck just like everybody else would have, you know, encountering it. Yeah, and, like, it, it made it funnier when the uh, creator also made a magical girl Madoka, and everyone's like, oh, this looks really cute, and as soon as I saw the name, I started laughing, going, you're all about to learn a lesson. Yeah, you're about to be taught something you weren't <laughs> expecting. I love I love showing like cutesy horror stuff to people and they're like, oh, yeah, I bet my kid's going to love this. And I'm like, yep, show it to your kid. Yeah, it'll turn out really, really well. <laughs> they'll, they'll love it. Yeah. So is there any animes you're actually looking forward to or any mangas coming out that you're looking forward to? Uh, as far as anime, like I really liked uh, the first season of Classroom of the Elite and then it went dead for a couple of years. Uh, but right after news broke that they were doing um, a season two for... Uh, what is it, Saga of the Evil Tanya, uh, they said that they were going to do a season two and a season three of Classroom of the Elite. Oh, and I, I just like the, I, I love the idea of like a um, a psychotic protagonist, right? So the fact that they're going to do two more seasons is really good. And I'm sure the normies are going to be like, suddenly acting like they know anime and go, oh, this is offensive. Yeah, probably. Also, sorry if I'm a, like, sound a little off. I'm all pseudofed it up for some reason. Like when the weather stops being cold, I, like I get allergies, but not like during allergy season, just when it kind of shifts off of snow. So I feel like I'm I'm stuffy if that's coming through. I don't know. So you're allergic to spring existing. Yeah, I'm I'm allergic <laughs> to warmer weather. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then never come to Florida. Yeah, it would be a living hell, I'm sure. Oh God, yes. Um. Okay. So game wise, I saw you were playing Ghost Um, Ghostwire Tokyo. What do you think? What have you thought of it so far? <clears throat> uh yeah so i i let, actually let me check my stats on it i'll tell you how many hours i played because otherwise everybody's gonna think oh well who cares what his opinion is if he's played two minutes of it <laughs> um so i yeah i played 11 hours of it right and then i got through what's it for this chapter i'm just on chapter four so halfway through the game right um i did side quest content you know i i, I tried to do you know not just submissions but just collecting spirits which is so tedious. Um, like the the environment is beautiful. The game, the city is. It feels like they built the city and then came up with the concept for the game. So the, there's all this intricate detail. Uh, the weather effects are great. You've got the cityscape that's great. Um, the first few hours are really amazing when you're kind of skulking around the streets and there's uh, fog and shadows kind of uh, boxing you in. Uh, but I'd say like maybe four hours into it, uh, you have all the powers you're going to have, you have all the weapons you're going to have, and suddenly you're gliding around like a, a flying squirrel <laughs> and swinging from rooftop to rooftop, and it just kills, it, it kills that feeling. Like, that feeling you had in the first few hours of the game is gone. Now, like, I like the verticality. I like being able to climb up super high and fly around. That's cool. Um, but, yeah, it just it just fell apart. Like, the combat needed to be so much more fleshed out than it was um I, I you know i wasn't even really disappointed with like the enemy types i, I thought they were fine and like uh, you know some of the submissions and stuff with the hauntings uh, especially the hoarder ones were pretty good um the boss fights were a little hit and miss 
Uh, but I don't know. There, there are certain games, I think, like you play into them and you reach a point maybe halfway, 60% through, where you're like, am I going to finish this or am I just going to go watch the YouTube video to see how it ends? And I, you know, I hate to say it, but that's kind of like what I reached with Ghostwire. Yeah, I, I, I've been playing it off and on because I've been playing that and I'm trying, I got the DLC for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I didn't expect to be as fun as it is. Mm -hmm. And it's like, every time I go back to it, I have fun for about an hour and then I'm like, okay, I have more fun with the side missions than the main missions because the side missions are, they, it looks, it feels like they put more work into the side mission stories and stuff than really the main mission. It feels like almost an experiment. Yeah, I, I, and again, I don't know like what happened with Ghostwire Tokyo. I know that um, they had some kind of like development issues. You know, I mean, people left the team. That that little Asian chick that was like their uh, PR spokesperson like left, and I think uh, other people went with her. So I don't know if there's like a scramble going on to try to flesh out what they were going to do with the title. But um, it just it's really disappointing because the city was so well put together. Like the setting was just perfect. Um, you know, with the fog and everything and, you know, maybe a couple hours into it, you start to get like these roving bands of armies of spirits walking or kind of like walking or running through the streets and you've got to like avoid them. And that was really, really good. But I mean, if you can just jump to the rooftop, it never becomes a problem. So like all the cool shit they kind of put in the way to impede you isn't really an impediment because you zip line your way out of there. Yeah. Actually, that does make a lot more sense that, like a lot of people, it makes me wonder if the story got butchered because maybe one of the main writers might have left. Maybe they had the design for the for the city done before the whole development hell. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it kind of bummed me out. But I, I found a better one to play uh, kind of uh, in between it. I was playing uh, Father Forgive Me, which is kind of like a, um, I don't want to call it like a retro art style, but... Uh, it's like a Cthulian first-person shooter. Oh, uh, that one's so much fun! I got the I yeah. I've been doing I did the demo for that originally and beta test it for the devs. That thing is so insanely addictive. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I've actually had a lot a lot of fun with it. Um, I like the style, the look of it. Uh, the weapons are good. Uh, stage layouts are good. Like those boomer shooters, I love that shit. So, are there any games that you're looking forward to? Be it uh, indie, triple A. Uh, uh, like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of feel like there's like a, a video game development hell going on right now. Uh, you know, part of it's the supply chain stuff, the pandemic stuff, um, you know, Sony and Microsoft having trouble getting a lot of consoles out. I feel like, um, I really, really feel like the OLED, uh, switch was probably meant to be like a, a switch, a new switch, you know, like they did the new 3DS. But Nintendo was a little gun shy on it because of production issues. Um, and so I feel like with all that going on, like all the game development studios kind of held back on projects. And they're like, well, let's wait a year. Let's wait two years until there's more of an install base to put out the titles we want to put out. So it feels like we're kind of like entering this weird drought. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But I I'm looking ahead at like the next six months. And all I'm seeing are delays like, you know. Uh, Metroid 4 got delayed repeatedly. Uh, Zelda's got delayed again. And I, you know, if you ask me what what's like a, an exclusive Microsoft game coming out, I couldn't really name one. What Starfield maybe? And then what's like a exclusive like PlayStation game coming out? I can't I can't think of any. I mean, like the the big blockbuster I guess that came out already would be Elden Rings. But aside from that, I mean, that's already out. I mean, you have like Kirby, which apparently is as you know hard as Dark Souls, according to Dark Side. Oh, tell me you've seen that clip. Yeah, where he's getting frustrated because <laughs> he can't beat the boss. Yeah, yeah, he rage quits it. Yeah, I've seen that. It's a it's a Kirby game, dude. Like I'm playing it on the quote unquote hard mode, and it's super insanely easy. How are you yep. that bad at a Kirby game? Yeah, I think I'm at the what is it, the third world or the fourth world, the carnival. Oh, that one's fun. Yeah, so I, I haven't had any issues with it. I think I died once because I was being stupid. If you get the time hat, use the time hat. It makes the boss fight so fun. Yeah, I, 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 quick. 
I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, you know, I, well, I've enjoyed it so far. I think it's a fun game. So I don't know why Phil's freaking out over it. I can't imagine that it's going to suddenly become Dark Souls on me. It's it's not. He's just some people maybe weren't born to game. Yeah, that, that well, that is true. I mean, it is Phil we're talking about. So <laughs> you might have a point. Yeah. You know what? He, you know what game we should give him? Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. That might be easier for him. It's got a journalist mode. It'll hold his hand. Oh, God, is there really one in there? Well, the easy mode is super easy. The only thing that's really annoying about that game is the swimming mechanics, and they don't let you climb on things that you can obviously climb on. But I'm kind of spoiled by Assassin's Creed right now, so when I stream it, I'm just yelling, let me fucking climb this! <laughs> See, they don't, like, you know, back in the day, right, uh, Grandpa Jim here, like in, I think it was Daggerfall, you used to have, like, a climb mechanic built into the game. Where you could climb on anything based on stats, which was fucking great. And then Morrowind came along and you couldn't do that, but then you had like Mark and Recall. I know this is a different series, but you had like Mark and Recall. You could zip around the map or go back to wherever you wanted to. Then Oblivion came in and they wouldn't let you do that. And then Skyrim came in and it was fast travel everywhere. I, I don't know, man. I miss some of the older game mechanics where they let you almost break the map or break the game and do what you wanted to do. You know what, let's just go with the Doom and no one can jump or climb on anything and that should make everybody happy. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> oh, can you imagine what would happen and how many articles we get if a game did that? If they took away stuff like that? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think everybody likes the fucking walking simulators now, so they'd be like, oh, well, this must be, this I... must be like a highly polished walking simulator. You can't <laughs> jump. I'd rather shoot myself in the fucking head than play a walking simulator. I heard your pre-stream, you're talking about Wolfenstein? Oh, yeah, we were talking about um, the original versus, like, the newer games, and the fact that that studio is doing a Indiana Jones game, and people are like, oh, they've learned from all their mistakes with Wolfenstein, they'll make a great Indiana Jones game. Yeah, didn't, I thought, like, Indiana Jones has been green or greenlit, like, ten times and has died every time it went up. I'm kind of amazed somebody's picking and running again. Uh, but yeah, I, I tried playing one of the newer Wolfenstein ones. I, th I think it was the second of the three. You know, like they had the first one, then the second, and then the one where you had the uh, two sisters. So it's a, the one in between the two sisters and the first one. Um, and it was so, it was like you'd play 10 minutes and you get a 20 minute CG cutscene. And then you'd play 10 minutes and you get a half an hour cutscene. And that drove me fucking crazy. Oh my god, I despise that one. And then the characters are written so annoying. Like, the only good characters from the first one game, they just abuse the shit out of them. Because they have to have that strong black character. And she's <laughs> not strong black, she's that she needs to get smacked in the face till she learns to shut up type character. Like, she oh, goes yeah. to the mentally retarded guy and starts picking on him just because <laughs> he's German. And I'm like, why is no one here throwing her out of the fucking sub? Well, yeah, I mean, you need the strong, independent woman to to put all the men in the pl you know their place so we can get on with it. I mean, they had the one. Uh, I, I can't. Yeah, Wolfenstein has been. <laughs> it turned into a shit show. A, a lot of them did. Like everybody's put so much, uh, so much you know, cinematics overlaying and story overlaying, just like a basic gameplay concept that they just don't let you. I, I blame Gears of War for it because, <laughs> like, I remember playing Gears of War and it was good and I had fun with it. But then he'd have to put his fingers up to his ear and walk down a hallway for 20 minutes. And they'd have to, like, exposition dump on you. And that feels like what everybody does now. So now, like, we need all this story and all this shit overlaid to explain motivations and characters and interactions. It's almost like a Hollywood bat where they have to, like, write a relationship to make you relate to the characters. Where you could just let people run around and shoot shit. Which is why I think I like, like, the boomer shooters. Like Father Forgive Me or Dusk, that kind of stuff. Because it's just, here's your gun, good luck. Yeah, and it's sort of like, oh, what was it? I tried playing Kojima's new game, and I left the room for an hour, and I swear to God, I came back, and it was still doing the same cutscene, and I'm like, I'm, why is this thing going for over an hour? Is there a game in here? Are you talking about the uh, Far Future Delivery Man game? Yeah, I just turned it into how many uh, clips could I yeet him off of? <laughs> I never got a chance to play it, so I don't know how bad it is. I Picture mean, I suppose. This. Oh, go an ahead. An hour cutscene. You walk yeah. away. You come back. Two more hours of a cutscene, and then you get five minutes of gameplay where you get to walk past a river, and then there's another cutscene to tell you the entire story in five minutes because they think they're deep, but they're not. 
fantastic. Sounds like money well spent. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know why Sony didn't have somebody holding a collar on him going, no, make a game. Don't make a movie. Make a game. Yeah, it kind of makes me wonder what his next project is going to be. Like, uh, what what is he going to follow that up with? Is it going to be like a sequel to that? Or is he going to try some entirely new IP again? Well, he announced that they gave him the okay to actually make a movie. So... <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> Maybe it, maybe for his movie, it'll just be gameplay. I, I don't know. <laughs> it'll be I like mean, the he, Doom movie, the original one. He was going to do like, you know, PT, the Silent Hill thing with uh, Del Toro, right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, didn't Del Toro work with, um, I was going to say Miyazaki, uh, Elden Rings? Didn't Del Toro work? Uh, mm. this, or no, no, that's George R.R. R. Martin. Holy shit. Oh, okay. I'm not going to look at the chat right oh, now. <laughs> oh, they're going to yell at me now. Old yeah. man, you're getting confused. Can't keep up with it all, but no. Um, yeah, I don't know what Kojima's gonna do. I, I wish they would have let him go with Silent Hills, but uh, it might have been good. It might have been okay. Well, but, I know uh, the guys from the original Silent Hill are right now working on a new game. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw the trailer for that, but it looks fucking weird. Uh, it reminds me of that free Sony game. Uh, I can't remember that. There was one where you went into like uh, the tower, and death was on a skateboard. You remember the? Do you know the game I'm oh, talking about? The free um, PSN one. What, what was the name of that thing? It's Super death fine, something. It. Death comes for you, or something like that. Oh, let us die. Somebody said that's the name of it. Yeah, I, I, I it's not even that the art style is similar. I, I, I don't know why it is, but that's just the vibe I get from looking at it. It does. It doesn't make me think. Oh shit, these are the Silent Hill guys. It makes me think. Oh shit! This is that free PSN game uh, <laughs> that they're they're they've like polished up or something. I'm kind of sad they didn't bring more of Team Silent along, like the monster designer and stuff. I think that would have worked really well. But I am still curious to see what they're making. I know they're really really mad because all the news keeps saying that they're making another Silent Hill, and they're like, "For the love of God, stop comparing it." Uh to Silent Hill. Yeah. 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 It's like I, I feel bad for devs when they when they start working on a new game and everyone has to compare it to all their old games. Except Kojima, he knows what he did. He made me walk off a cliff a hundred times just to play make some gameplay. Well, what is that game even gonna play like now? Because I thought that was really heavily dependent on like the online component of having other people build like uh structures in the world to help you like navigate. But if nobody's online playing it anymore, is it just gonna be you running around the mountains delivering UPS packages with no help at all? <laughs> probably right like i mean it's got to kind of screw up the whole like with dark souls and stuff if you didn't have invaders you could still you know the cpu kind of step in and do stuff um what was it the old man fight or i'm thinking demon souls but like the old man fight it would still happen without another player controlling them but like in ups well i can't what is the name of the game death stranding death stranding thank you uh but like in death stranding uh if you don't have like the um well i can't even remember he had a term for it uh, like a special multiplayer term for what he was trying to get people to do, like roping or 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 fishing. I can't, he gave an interview. I could swear to God, it was like an IGN or something like that to try to try to explain. Uh, no, it was some, I don't know, but um, it was you know without that component, what is that game going to play like in two years, five years when you have nobody building anything in the world and it's just barren and dead. It'll probably get like um, servers, like people will probably make independent servers and stuff like that for some reason, like what they used to do with WoW before, you know, Blizzard came in and destroyed that shit. I don't know if Death Stranding is going to be popular enough for people to start running independent servers for it. Oh, someone said we don't understand Death Stranding. It's it's too uh, high IQ for the average gamer. <laughs> it is. It, it's too far up there. That's true. It's That's very true, Chad. But, um, oh, are you going to play the, um, the Evil Dead game when it comes out next month? No, uh, I haven't, I haven't played a good Evil Dead game ever. So no, I don't think I am. <laughs> you don't want to run around and kill other people with Ash? Uh, no, like the last Evil Dead game I played, I think was the fucking shithouse one on Dreamcast. So I'm fairly certain it was on Dreamcast. I don't. I just don't have fond memories of it, so I'm not really ready to jump in. Um, it's like every once in a while something will catch my eye, and I'll be like, "Oh, you know, I like I I like that TV franchise, or that movie franchise. Maybe I'll give it a chance." Uh, like Friday the Thirteenth. Remember that the multiplayer one that came out? Yeah. I played it for like a couple hours, and I was like, "Wow, this really isn't doing it for me." 
Those guys are making a Texas Chainsaw game. Yeah, it'll be Friday the 13th with a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like every horror franchise is now just getting that. Like, even Ghostbusters is basically just getting that, which is fine, but also give us, like, a single-player thing to do. Because, you know. Oh, oh, somebody in your chat, they came, They said it was Strand Gaming. Did he really call it Strand Gaming? No, I could did have, he? I could have sworn it was something even worse than that. Oh, that's so gay. Am I waiting on Hogwarts Legacy? Yes, that's what I, yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> waiting for, is Hogwarts Legacy. Are we gonna, is that gonna be your first official Let's Play? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that, that's how I'm dipping into it. I've just gotta order a full body rig so I can do the whole VTuber thing. <laughs> um, and then it will be nothing but Hogwarts. I'm gonna make myself, um, what character? I, I don't know. Gandalf? I just to, just because like I'm a confused old boomer, right? So I wouldn't even know, would I? So I'm going to be Gandalf, let's playing Harry Potter. I really wish somebody would do that just to fuck with that fan base. Because the last right. time I've seen them mad is when I did the porn game and they were like, Harry Potter shouldn't have porn. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. Hogwarts Legacy probably will be a fun game. But, uh, you know, it's another one of those, like going back to that, I, it feels like kind of a gaming drought because like i know all the ps5 and next gen systems it feels like all their games have been i mean it's like they've almost got backwards they're all available for ps4 or uh xbox one x i i suppose if you're like a exclusive pc gamer it doesn't really affect you but if you're like a console gamer <laughs> you're probably getting screwed over a little bit yeah only one that seems to be coming out on top is really nintendo right now yeah, because they're they're pretty much just doing their own thing, um, and probably preparing to, I don't know, launch a new console or a new iteration in a year or two. Yeah, honestly, it would be smart of them to wait, especially with microchips starting to finally go down. Yeah, 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 that's definitely true. With uh, with Sony, I'm noticing they're working more and more with the PC side. Do you think after the PlayStation Five they'll have a console, or do you think they're just going to give it up and just go full on PC? I think Microsoft uh, kind of like gave away the game plan back when uh, they first debuted Xbox One X or Xbox One, right? Uh, if you remember the horrible presentation they gave where they were like, everything's going to be online gaming, um, everything's going to be cloud, everything's going to be streaming, you're not going to own a game disc, you know, the concept of ownership is going to be different. Uh, and everybody hated that, remember? Like they got so much shit for it. Uh, but now they have Game Pass and everybody loves it. You know, oh, the Netflix of gaming. I think Sony sees that and is like, shit, we can make money doing that. I mean, they've already adjusted their PlayStation Plus plan, right, to kind of start to do that. Yeah, they, they uh, saw, like, the Nintendo one and they instantly went, yeah, we're copying that. And it's like, motherfucker. And you know, everyone's like, oh, how no other system would do this. And I'm like, Nintendo literally started doing this and you people praise them. Yeah, like my honest guess is um this is it feels like this will be the last generation of purely physical media for like console gaming outside of Nintendo. I think Nintendo will do digital stuff, but I think they'll still like be like, "Hey, buy cartridges." But like I think Sony and uh, Microsoft if they put out like a next generation after this, uh it's all going to be like cloud shit. It's all going to be Game Pass stuff or PlayStation Plus stuff. It's all going to be digital. And I, I don't think it, it I mean, I think they've pushed it in that direction that people just accept it yeah because sony like um i got sent the horizon forbidden west uh regalia edition you know the big expensive one no mm -hmm. disc in there but they give you a steelbook for a disc i'm like what the fuck is the point then right right i mean i think the only you know it'll be good for like smaller companies like what is it uh, limited run gaming uh that does like uh physical media prints for digital games like they'll they'll do gangbusters because everybody will want like a physical copy but the official discs and the official games coming from the companies, I think are just not going to happen. And I'm still pissed off because I remember when they said, we'll do digital distribution and we'll pass the savings on to the consumer because, Oh, you know, we have to pay 10% to stock it at a, a game store and we have to pay 10% uh, to print it on media and to put it into a plastic box and to ship it. So you should be saving 20 to 30% off the price of the game. And they're still charging for digital copies, the same for physical. Because they know people are stupid. Yeah, because they know nobody remembered them saying that, oh, you'll get it for like 40 bucks for a AAA new game instead of 60. 
And you've already got the uh, the TV and movies already doing that. They're already censoring quietly movies and stuff, and they, they want your physical copies of them so that you don't have them anymore. Yeah, well, that and, like, anime prices are crazy. Yeah. Like, I, if I try to buy, like, anime on Blu-ray uh, new, uh, the prices are ridiculous. And I don't like this double-dipping shit they're doing now, where they're like, we'll sell you half a season. This is the scummiest fucking thing. Sentai does this a lot. Uh, a couple companies do this a lot. We'll sell you the part one of season one, whatever, for uh, sixty dollars, and then we'll sell you part two of uh, season one for sixty dollars, and then uh, ten months later we'll sell the full season for forty bucks. And I'm like, what? What the hell is going on? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? I just, I just want to watch anime. Why are you splitting it up and trying to make money? They're going by the Japanese way. Oh, it's so bad. Um, there's one, uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, Magi, is it? I can't remember the exact title name. Uh, I'm, I'm almost certain it's a Sentai one. Um, I tried to find the Blu-rays for those. They're like 300 bucks a piece for each season. Jesus. No, no reason. No reason for them to be that price. Unless they're out of print. Fuck that noise. Like I, I want to start getting the JoJo Bizarre Adventure for my collection because I've been collecting heavily on physical media. And some of those you can get pretty cheap, and then some of them, their prices are nuts, and it's like, there's no reason that you should do this. And they're like, oh, because we can. Yeah, because they can. Because they can they can totally get away with it. And, and they know people will buy it. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe that'll change now that, because um, didn't Funimation just uh, like roll itself into Crunchyroll? Yeah, so... and Crunchyroll's getting ready to shut them down. Yeah, so I I don't know what happens to the rights to make like, you know, physical copies of stuff. If that'll decrease the price now, hopefully it'd be nice. I know and right now, Toei. Have you heard about what happened with Toei? No. So somebody hacked their uh, server. They kept everything on one server for all the new seasons. Someone hacked into it and deleted everything. <laughs> so J they just everything. had the one copy. Yeah, they didn't have any backups of any of it. They're claiming they only had one copy. Like, even the Dragon Ball movie that was supposed to come out, half of it can't be finished. The CGI portion was on that server. So it's oh, being see, delayed. That sounds like somebody was stuck at the office one night and just couldn't meet a deadline. And they're like, fuck it, we got hacked. And they just, they pulled the plug and they blamed it on the evil hackers. They're like, oh, no, everything's lost, boss. <laughs> I had my shit done on time. We were ready to go and print and bring this out to the theaters, but we got hacked and it's just, it's gone forever. That or someone really, really hated One Piece and was like, you know what? I don't need episode 5,890 to be out there. Yeah, just, it's it's time to just stop now, I think. I can't draw, I, if you make me draw Luffy again, <laughs> I'm just going to throw myself out a window. Like that isn't the manga like still going? Is that thing ever going to end, or is it going to end up like berserk? And I know people are going to get mad at me for that. I end up as berserk, as then the guy just drops dead, and we never get an ending. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, maybe I I don't know. Um, he'll probably keep it going as long as he can. Uh, they they want to make money off it and milk it, right? Um, because it's super popular. So I, I mean, I understand, I guess. Uh, didn't the same thing happen with Attack on Titans? Didn't he want to like end it at a certain point? They're like, no, you have to keep going because uh, we it's so popular. You need to keep doing it. I know Yu Yu Hakusho had that issue where he wanted to finish it and the anime company and the manga company said you can't. So he said, fuck you, made just a half ass ending and walked away. And they had to make it into the anime because there was nothing. It's just, by the way, everyone ended up happy. Bye. Oh, what was the... um? What was the... There's an anime I watched about Go. That sounds so stupid. Akari There's no an, Go? Yeah, fucking great anime. Uh, but I, I've, I, I've heard, I don't know if the rumor is true, uh, that the author got so fucking angry that the Japanese team lost to the Koreans that they, like, torpedoed the manga and refused to do anything else, and they had to end the anime. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I find it funny. But I mean, I like I hear stories like that from time to time where they're like forced to keep doing it. They don't want to do it. They have a reason they want to stop. So they find a way to kind of like shit can it. So I mean, maybe that happens. I don't know. And yet you have older, like, I, I'm I'm totally a boomer. I like things like Tezuka and stuff like that. And he made sure most of his stuff had an ending, except, you know, the one he died working on Phoenix. I kind of miss when manga artists were like, "We this is the ending. It's here. Deal with it. 
Yeah, because you had a nice little bookend. Like they had a, you know, this is where it starts. This is where it ends. We're, we're good. It's done. Uh, but now it's like, no, we got to keep going. More seasons, more seasons, more seasons. We need to sell them uh, part one, two, and three of season eight uh, for $842. And they'll buy it. Yeah. Oh, someone asked, what do you think of Shield Hero? Uh, like, I like the concept at the start, but it didn't, like, <laughs> I like the idea of the, you know, the Aseki protagonist shows up and he's accused of something horrible and then um, he has to deal with it. But then that only lasts for maybe half an arc in the first part, right? And then it turns into your your basic kind of high adventure. Um, so, I mean, it, it's fine. It's not bad, but it wasn't what I was hoping for. So for Isekais, if you could have your perfect type of Isekai, what would it be? <clears throat> Um, my, my perfect kind it already exists. Uh, uh, Grimgar, Fantasies, and Ash. I still need to catch up on that one. I read the first uh, manga and I liked it. Uh, well, enjoy the only other two mangas because they never followed it past that. <laughs> of course. Of course, right. when it's good, there's only one or two. I, I liked it because it was a slow burn. I like the idea of, okay, uh, we all know the, the, the formula of this shit, right? Nothing surprising about it. We're going to bring in people, oh, they're amnesiacs, they don't understand what's going on, it's obviously another world, they've been reincarnated or brought forth or whatever, however you want to put it. Um, but then they hit you with the reality of it, right? It's not like you're some badass wizard shooting fireballs out your ass. It's how are you going to pay for rent? Like, how are you going to feed yourself? Have you ever killed something before? Because now you've got to, like, go find something that looks kind of like a human and, like, slit its throat so you can earn a couple coins to eat food. And it's it's this really weird kind of dynamic, and it's set against this really beautiful like watercolor city. Um, and I just it was a really slow burn. I really really liked it. It was a slow burn of this group of uh, kids, high schoolers, um, that had to deal with like the reality of we've got to like actually take care of ourselves um, and like feed ourselves and clothe ourselves and train ourselves because nobody's going to help us here. And then you you know you've got something that I don't want to go too like spoiler into it, but um, it it was good. It was so you know I so I, I read the manga on that, then I watched the anime and I liked them both. Uh, and that was the only one that ever convinced me to try a, a light novel. So I was like, okay, because I know the light novel expands like way beyond this. And I made it ten pages into the first light novel, and I never touched a light novel past <laughs> that. So I guess I, I can't ask you if you've read Vampire Hunter D's light novels or the Slayer's light novels. I, I don't know. You tell me. Okay, because like here's the fucking problem I ran into. People said, oh, light novels. And I thought, okay, it might, uh, like, they, they were explaining it to me. And I was like, okay, a light novel. This is the idea I had of what a light novel was. One or two pages of animation, a chapter to give you an idea of kind of what you're supposed to be looking at. And then like um, a young reader's uh, version of a novel, right? Like young adult, maybe teenager. So not like heavily written. And I'd be fine with that. Uh, instead, what I got was like one word sentences. And I was like, this is so bad. This is so fucking bad, man. This is so bad. I can't read this. I thought somebody was fucking with me. Like somebody had like put up like a gag version of this and like sold it online. Cause I bought 12 of these fucking things. I was going to read the whole fucking thing. Yeah. 10 pages into it. And I was like, I can't, they've, they've spent three pages talking about the darkness of the place they've uh, instantiated in. And half of these sentences are one word. And I was like, fucking done. Oh God, it was a bad experience. That, that's a shitty light novel. If, I, if I'm going to suggest you good ones, it's the original Slayers ones, you know, where the anime came from. And the Vampire Hunter D ones are really, really good. But you know, if you like if you like the two anime movies, you'll you'll definitely enjoy it, especially because it's got Amino's art in it. He's the one that does the art for like Final Fantasy and stuff, the original box art, and it's mm -hmm. it's really really beautifully done, and it's really fucked up because you have the D has a sword from Cthulhu because why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah, his sword comes from Cthulhu. Because we need to throw everything into a blender and make it absolutely batshit nuts. Oh, and the vampires come from space. Well, yeah, I mean, where would they come from? <laughs> it's so wonderfully insane. It's so 80s. That's the best way to describe it, 80s. Oh, my God. I'm trying to, I'm trying to look up something here to see if I could find it. Let's see if I can get this here. 
uh, it just came out as an anime uh, about a hitman. A guy that uh, he gets it's a hitman that's uh, a second into a world he's got to kill the hero. Anybody in chat know what I'm thinking of? People, I don't think it's Spy X Family, is it? No, but I hear that's supposed to be really good too, though. That one's it's got a weird controversy going on online that I thought was a joke. I see somebody say, kill the hero, question mark. Yeah, uh, he gets summoned. <laughs> the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated into another world. Thank you. God, I love that some mangas, I, I absolutely love the fact that they their titles are basically a plot synopsis. Like, it's it's a paragraph and a half long. It's oh, because, fuck you, you don't need any surprises. Here's what you're going to get. This is This is what you get. Deal with it. Oh my god, did they pull it down from everywhere too? Of Somebody said they you do. obviously need to watch La Blue Girl. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. That's the one I, de I, I desperately need that one. Um, hold on one sec here. Yeah, I'll read I think your guys' super the, chats, don't worry. I think this is the one. I'm going through all this work just to find one fucking thing. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh where is it? I could have sworn it was I, I could have sworn the person that did this one did uh one called Duke's Daughter Reincarnates in Another World or something like that. Maybe it was the artist that was worked on the same one. It was the artist. Okay, I'm sorry, Rhea was the artist that worked on both of these. Um one of the mangas I've been uh reading that is fucking phenomenal as far as like Isekis go is um accomplishments of the duke's daughter uh which is really really good but it's the same people that worked on that assassin one which i thought was really weird because it's only one of the first it's like one of the first times i've run into uh one where i've like read two completely different things that were both really fucking good by the same people sometimes lightning strikes twice yeah yeah it's uh it was definitely surprising all right time to see how much of a weeb you really are so we know you like manga and anime but do sure. you like Godzilla and Ultraman and all that kind of fun stuff? I mean, I, I, I'm an old man, so I watched a lot of that shit when I was young. <laughs> but I mean, I, I watched the old stuff. If you're going to ask me about, like, uh, you know, anything, like the last 10 years of Godzilla, no. The last 10 years of Ultraman, no. But if you're going to ask me about, like, the really shitty, um, <laughs> especially, like, the Ultraman TV show, or at least it was cut oh, up and God, shown as a TV yeah. show. Uh, we... Like, yeah. We just started doing, uh, we're streaming it actually tonight, we're doing Ultraman Q, and watching people's reactions to that is amazing. Yeah, that used to be like, I mean, I remember, they, I, I almost can swear that that was like a Saturday morning thing for a while. I can't remember who would have run it, if it was like NBC, ABC, or Fox or somebody, probably Fox. Uh, but like, you could watch Ultraman cut up into like half hour chunks. So you're not interested in the new Ultraman movie that's just started showing off its trailer? I mean, I'm sure it'll be fun and stuff, but I haven't like watched um, Ultraman or Godzilla stuff in a long time. I, I did find the uh, the newer like Japanese was it Shin Godzilla? Um, like interested the one where he has like the tail that like starts growing human Godzillas on it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the one that's mostly in a boardroom. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> I like that one. I'm in like I am the only person that because people get mad at me when I call it the boardroom movie. Well, I, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it, it's fair. It, it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, we're going to try to establish it and uh, make people relate to it. So, you know, that's what you get stuck with. But like the Americanized ones, um, I, I guess the newer ones are okay. Uh, the one they did in the '90s was just trash. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. That is the only true Godzilla. <laughs> oh God, was that bad? That was bad. It was like they wanted to do like a a Dino Crisis video game movie and they just called it Godzilla. It was just really fucking terrible. It's because the director wanted to rip off uh, Jurassic Park because he thought it'd make him famous if he did that because he didn't like Godzilla. Yeah, and it worked out so well for him. <laughs> right? Although the cartoon wasn't terrible. I don't think I've ever seen the cartoon, but I, I you know, the movie I think was enough for me. Yeah. With its amazing soundtrack, with was it was he calling himself P Diddy at the time, or was it still Puff Daddy? I remember he did a song for it, and Jamiroquai did a song for their soundtrack for that fucking movie. 
That, cause that's what you expect in a Godzilla movie. A little P. Diddy? Yeah. That's, it. that's <laughs> what everybody needs in their Godzilla movies. So I guess I can't ask you, what do you prefer, the original Godzilla versus King Kong or the newer one? God, I, pre I prefer neither. I don't want to watch a monkey fight a lizard. Like, I want to see Godzilla destroy shit. King Kong bores the fuck out of me. Have you ever seen the original one? You have a drunken monkey fighting Godzilla. Oh, worst, worst crossover ever. The, the, <laughs> the K King Kong should just be flushed down the fucking toilet. It's not a good monster <laughs> movie. It's not like it's, a, it's not like a kaijo. Like, just get just get rid of him. Let's stick with Godzilla. Okay, then which one is your favorite Godzilla movie? And you're not allowed to say the very first one. That one's too easy. <sighs> My like, I I couldn't even tell you the names of them. They're like you're asking me to pick like thirty to they're like thirty fucking Godzilla movies. Um, if I had to think of like a plot, eh, I guess it would be the first one with Ghidorah, or Ghidorah in it. Uh, yeah. I, like you're, I'm working on fragments here. Like yeah. all I remember are, are parts of like, I remember the one where he fought the smog monster and I remember the one where he fought Ghidorah and there's the Mothra one. I remember, um, which the Ghidorah one? one he fights him every other week. Yeah, but uh, the first one, the, the yeah, like, I know kind of like mean. the initial introduction. Um, what was the member? There was one that was kind of like an early '90s one, I think. It was like a weird kind of like tentacle plant monster. Oh, they, Godzilla versus Biollante. Yeah, that one was pretty good too. I thought because that was they tried to kill an actor on that one. That's why it was so good. Oh, you want a little method acting, a little <laughs> realism. Toho had a thing for trying to kill every Godzilla actor. You got to aim for something. <laughs> so, hmm. all right, guys, let's go ahead and look at yours. People are very happy that you like Shin Godzilla. You have made everyone's day. Oh, well, you're welcome, Chad. So let me go ahead and grab some of their questions. Let me see. Where do I find the stream lab? Or not the stream lab. Yeah, actually, let me pull that one up. If you super chatted one, you don't have to super chat again. I'm going to scroll up and get it. So don't worry. Uh, okay, so somebody said that you should try the hero and his elf bride open a pizza parlor in another world. I, I don't see. You could be telling the truth. Like <laughs> the titles of these fucking things are. That's probably a real title. I don't know. I don't know if I. I don't know if you're fucking with me. To be honest <laughs> with you, I've. You know, there's a point. I've read so much of this shit, where all the stories have bled together. And it's like the most confused narrative in my fucking head at this point. Like if I don't look at my bookmarks to like remind myself of the title names and shit, it just gets it gets very confusing for me. Somebody else said, "Do you like Konosuba?" No, no. So I watched <laughs> that. I watched that two seasons of it, right? Um, uh, bitchy goddess, right? Bitchy goddess reincarnates with the the hero, and then oh, they got to go do stuff. No, I didn't. I didn't really enjoy it. No. Sorry, everybody. It's it's I'm sorry, got its I'm, I'm sorry. For me. I'm sorry. I've got good taste, chat. Okay, get on my level. Okay, have you watched um? Oh, what is it, Mob Psycho? Yeah, yeah, I've watched uh, season one and two of that. Excited for season three now that it's been finally announced. I didn't actually know they had a season three announced, but yes, I would be excited for that. Yeah, they started showing off the trailer. They said they were waiting for um the whole pandemic stuff because they uh, didn't want any of their animators to get sick. Which, you know, unlike every other animation company that's like, screw it, get sick, get in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just I'm watching your chat's reaction. I'm, I'm <laughs> popping back and forth between Twitch and YouTube to see what they're, what they're saying. They asked about Overlord. Uh, yeah, no, I watched that. So I liked uh, Overlord season one and two. For some reason, season is it three. Um, I, I don't know. It felt like it got weird. Like season one was really good. And then it started getting weird. It, it felt like, I, I don't know if it's a tone. Or just the story itself, but it, it just kind of felt like it veered off for me. It's good. I like it, but something about it just kind of changed. I don't know what. Yeah, actually, I didn't finish. Now that I think about it, I didn't finish season three either. Yeah, it just kind of, I, I, I don't know. It, it's just, it. I can't really, I like have to sit down and watch it the whole way through again to give you a better analysis of it. But yeah, for, for some reason, it just kind of threw me off a little bit. So they're asking, do you like Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid? I haven't even watched that or read it. <laughs> what, you don't like the big boobed lolly? <laughs> no, uh, uh, that would be called a short stack, right? No, no, I haven't. Um, I haven't watched that one. I haven't read that one. 
I, I like recent stuff that I've really liked. Well, it's not even recent. It's probably like a year or two old now. A Sentence of the Bookworm. I really fucking love that. I thought that was really good. I'd love to see another season of that. Have you seen um one that I've been enjoying now that's got a season two out is uh, Restaurant from Another World? I think I I think I have. I think I I think I read the manga of that. Uh, that's the one where the door just opens up in a completely different places, right? Yeah. Like it could completely random worlds, right? Yeah, there's um, only yeah. a few where it's like it's guaranteed because they're like always customers. Yeah, I you know, and there's another one too about uh, for some reason talking about this. There's like a cafe one about a dude who's an assassin. Um, it's like a dark, it's like a dark mafia one. He's like an assassin, and fucking crazy people go there to eat, and he kidnapped a girl who's gonna get murdered, like she's gonna have her head cut off in the desert, and like she ends up getting a job as a waitress there. And it's the weirdest shit. Uh, and they like form this friendship throughout it. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of that one because that was pretty good. Who but like she had a guy. That one I meant to me or DM it to me because I'm actually curious. Yeah, because like really early on, they he had a customer come in and he's like, "I want you to serve this to him as it is." He wants to eat like his mother's um, porridge or something like that, and he always put terrible things in it, and the guy would get mad and freak out. Um, and she thought that was wrong. She wanted to do him a solid. So she took it out and made the, you know, like the porch or whatever it was proper. Um, and then it reminded him of how he's like a serial killer and murdered his mother. So he tried to like slit her throat. And he's like, I told you, just feed him the stupid shit. <laughs> oh, this is good. Hold on. I need to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. He's like, you, you did the complete wrong thing you shouldn't have done here. The woman fucked up. What a surprise. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, she's trying to cope. It was a really bizarre diner. Okay, so they're asking, um, have you seen the Golden Boy dub? <clears throat> I mean, I think everybody has, hasn't? I mean, like, this is, you're asking like, somebody earlier saying, like, La Blue Girl. Like, I mean, you're talking, you're, you're bringing up really old shit. Yeah, no, I probably have. <laughs> okay, dubs versus subs. Uh, I almost always, or like, exclusively go with subs. See, I'll do. I'll or do... no, I, I, yeah, subs. Uh, like it, it, unless for some reason, the very first experience I had with it was a dub, then I'll follow it through it. But like, if it's a choice, I usually go subtitles. See, you should have said dub just so we could watch the chat explode. No, no. <laughs> um, you don't want to lose your cred. No, it's just it. It doesn't. I, I, it feels weird. I, I guess it'd be like if. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. It'd be like, uh, I, I'm sure foreigners are the same way with like American movies. I bet if you ask them, like, do you want, do you want it to be dubbed in your language or do you want it like to be subtitled? Like, cause you know, think of like watching a, somebody like Sylvester Stallone or Schwarzenegger with like a really bad dubbed over Indian accent. Can you, can you <laughs> get worse than their accents in early stuff? No, probably not. Probably <laughs> not. So. Let's see what else they, um, oh, oh, so how much do you like the Cowboy Bebop live action? Wasn't it a masterpiece? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what the fuck they were doing with that. Like, I mean, I, I could let some stuff go, um, but not a lot of it. Uh, you know, I think, <laughs> I think what really sums up the shit show that that was, was the very end of it, uh, where Ed walks in and it just, it just is so bad. It's so fucking bad. And um, I, I'm having flashbacks thinking about that clip now. <laughs> oh, no, PTSD. I mean, I, I, if I had to, like, if you had to do a comparison between what's worse, like Cowboy Bebop or, you know, from Netflix or Halo for Paramount, like, fuck, I don't know. Like, it's just a shit show all around, isn't it? Oh, see, I've been banned from watching the Halo one. My boyfriend's been watching it because uh, he runs a YouTube channel. Sure. Him and his friend, literally the first day we were going to watch it, he imes me and he goes, don't come in. And I'm like, why? He goes, it's been 20 minutes of nonstop screaming. And I'm like, it's that bad? And he showed me some scenes and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Well, I think when they start out saying, um, we didn't pay attention to the games at all, <laughs> uh, you know, you're in for a shit show. And then when you see the Covenants led by a 30-year-old white woman, you're like, something, what? Something's gone wrong here. <laughs> I, I don't think the High Prophet's going to take his orders from a Karen. What the fuck is happening? 
Hollywood happened. Have you seen the newer Doom movie? The newer Doom movie? Are we talking about the one with The Rock? No, there's one after that. Where the Doom guy is the side character and it's all about woman power. Oh, God, no. And all of the costumes look like they're made out of styrofoam. Was it worse than the one with The Rock? Yes. Because that, that's an accomplishment, if that's possible. At least The Rock one had that one scene, you know, the scene where they they actually go into first person and everything. This one didn't give us that pleasure. Oh, of course not. Why Why would they? Do? Well, to be fair, Halo had a scene where they went into first person, and Halo is still fucking trash. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So what about the Moon Knight series? Have you seen that yet? Uh, no, I don't believe I have. I'm, I haven't seen it yet. I've seen a couple scenes and it just looks like Deadpool light. Oh, yeah. From like, because they were showing, oh, I, forgive me. I'm still learning the Moon Knight comics, but Mr. White. And he's making snarky retorts like Deadpool and jumping around, just smacking his fists around like he thinks he's a boxer. And everyone that I know that's seen Moon Knight is like, or, is, you know, knows the comics is like, that's the wrong fucking character to do that with. And I'm like, why? He's supposed to be the intelligent one. I'm like, well, not anymore. Now he's Deadpool. Yeah, it just feels like a lot of the people getting IPs for comic books or uh, video games or mangas or animes or whatever to do their live, uh, you know, action adaptations are just shitting the bed with them really bad. Um, <laughs> like, I, we we still have, what, isn't the Mario movie still coming out with Chris Pratt? Yeah, and it's being made by the guys who made The Minion and people are still like, it might be good. It might be like the Sonic movie. I, I don't know. I mean, Sonic took such an ass kicking. I still remember, uh, at least in the beginning, I still remember when they leaked the um, uh, the PR fluff where they're talking about how to design his uh, character and they're talking about his 90s tood and his new redo and his look and everything. And it was just, <laughs> you could tell it was written by people in a corporation that are just don't give a fuck about anything. And then, uh, I mean, that was a Paramount property too, wasn't it? Okay, didn't they come out and just say, oh, fuck it, we're going to redo all the CG. <laughs> Please forgive us. Yeah, because even Sega was pissed because they hadn't seen what they had designed until it came out. Like, the trailer came out and shit, and the leaks, and they were like, no. Yeah, and the weird thing is the guys that did a lot of the uh, like the uh, special effects for that were the ones that did cutscenes for the games. So, like, you knew they could do it if they really needed to. So that was that had to be, like, a studio decision to make him look like he did. And like move like he did, and it was just, and there was like Gangster Paradise is a song in the first trailer. It was a really weird thing. Oh, you wait, you didn't hear about that? It was the studio. The director is actually the one that leaked everything because he hated how it looked, and he kept telling them, along with the special effects people, that it needs to look like the games. Yeah, well, that was a that was a correct decision to make it look like the games. I haven't, I, like, I didn't really watch it, and I know that there's a sequel out. Um, I'm guessing it's doing well because I, I, from what I heard, they're doing a third one now. Yeah, it's like it's blowing up in theaters. I haven't, yeah. I haven't been able to see the second one because where I live now has no movie theaters for like an hour, and I'm like, fuck no. So I'm sure it's gonna be. It has to be Shadow or it has to be a Metal Sonic. So that should be uh, entertaining. I would make a joke about Shadow should be voiced by a black guy, but we already got our internet meme with making Knuckles the black guy. A uh, true, a uh, true. Yeah, because it's Idris Elba, right? Is playing him. Yeah, you know somebody in that casting was giggling. They knew. I'm they sure. Knew. I'm sure they thought it was funny. <laughs> so, are you looking forward to the live action Yu Yu Hakusho and One Piece being made by the same people who did Cowboy Bebop? I'm not joking. No, I know they'll be they'll be terrible. Uh, and actually, I, I mean, I don't care if they butcher One Piece because I'm not really into One Piece. But uh, them fucking up Yu Yu would probably piss me off a little. Yeah, that one's gonna make me sad. Yeah. Let's see. Who's going to be the token black eye? It's got to be Hie. No, Kurabara. Yeah, Kurabara. Yes. And let's I, see. Kurama I, is the redhead, so what are they going to do to him? Well, isn't it a law for, for adaptations <laughs> that, the red, that the redhead becomes a black guy? So <laughs> there'll be two. I don't, I don't know, actually. Um, uh... It's going to be bad. I, I think everybody knows. Maybe Netflix will just stop. Maybe they'll, be, maybe they'll be like, you know, it's not working out. Let's just stop. Yeah, but they would need brains for that. That'd be like Disney learning their lesson. And as somebody who used to work for Disney, they don't learn their fucking lesson. 
I don't know. You know, what I am kind of curious about is what's going to happen with Stranger Things 4? Because with like all the, the Ukraine Russia war thing going on, uh, cause isn't like, isn't Stranger Things 4 half set in Russia? So now are they going to get like this weird kind of like blowback for that? I, I, I'm kind of curious how Netflix is going to, are they going to like, um, you know, when they redid, um, oh fuck, what was the eighties movies with Wolverines in it? Oh, um, uh, some Red Dawn. Yeah. When they re, when they remade Red Dawn, it was originally going to be China, right? And then they changed it to North Korea because they wanted to be able to show it internationally. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happened. So I wonder if with Stranger Things, are they going to redo it and say, oh, no, it's not Russia. Um, actually, they're in, I don't know, Romania now. Everyone <laughs> or they're in a ticket to America and they'll all have a happy ending. It's Kazakhstan, guys. It's Kazakhstan. <laughs> it's, that's where they they're are gonna right now. They're going to meet Borat. <laughs> yeah, they're oh, going to meet God, Borat. Oh, God, that actually that's would happening. be interesting. Stranger Things 4 is going to fucking suck. Yeah, people are already saying it. Sometimes a series shouldn't go past, like, two or three seasons. Because then you're just milking that shit like The Walking Dead. Why is that? Is, wait, did that thing end or is that thing still going? Holy fuck. I don't know. I mean, I liked the very beginning of The Walking Dead. But then when it got, was it season two where it was just nothing but a soap opera at the fucking farmhouse? Um, that's, I completely tuned out at that. It's like, I, I tried watching the first season. I really, really like the special effects. They they do an amazing job. And it just... I don't know. Something about the dialogue just made me kind of tune out. I think I was expecting something more like, you know, Night of the Living Dead and stuff like that. But I had never read the comic, so that might be why. But I, I feel bad for anyone that's a fan of the comic, because apparently they've really butchered that stuff. Uh, you know what I liked that was complete schlock and shit, but I still really enjoyed it? it was Black Summer. Have you ever heard of that? that. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like a zombie apocalypse thing. It's on uh, Netflix. There are two seasons of it. Um, and I really like season one. Uh, even though the characters are stupid and half the shit they get into is uh, just dumb. Uh, it was actually, I don't know why I enjoyed it, but I did. I liked it more than The Walking Dead. I need to look that up. Have you seen the Creep Show TV show yet? The one from the 90s? No, they did a new one uh, based like in the movies, like from the original movie by Romero and stuff. And it's so cheesy, wonderful 80s. No, I haven't seen any of the new stuff. All three seasons are really good because they, they do like the big scares and everything. And it's shot just like a comic book. Like they do the lighting and everything like a comic. And it works really well except one episode because Stephen King's <laughs> son wrote it. And it had to be political for some reason. I was going to say, when you brought up Stephen King, I was going to say, was there no ending to it? Did it just stop at 50 minutes and everybody's like, wait, what happened? Ironically, his story for it was actually good, but his son's just... Let's throw in Trump supporters for no reason. And we're going to make the redneck every single Republican stereotype, even though it doesn't need to be in there. All you need to show is him beating his wife to be bad. But they're like, he wants to go bomb the White House because he likes Trump, even though, you know, when it's supposed to be have been shot, Trump was in office and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck even am I watching? We're, just make it horror. I want my horror. That's all I want. It reminds me of, um, uh, what was it? There was a Rainbow Six game that was going to come out that I think got canceled or retooled. Uh, there's a CG trailer that came out for it where they basically, uh, the bad guys are like, we're going to, we're going to do domestic terrorism. Right. Um, and then their version of that was to go to like corporate headquarters of bankers and like throw them out the fucking windows. <laughs> and, uh, He's that serious. got, that got pulled down real quick, but, uh. <laughs> Oh, God, I wish I could remember the name of it. Maybe somebody in your chat knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Didn't Rainbow Siege, aren't they the ones that did the shootout at the um, airport? that got, Or was that Cobb that did that and that got like a lot, they got in a lot of shit for that? Uh, the no Russian one? No, nah, it was Call of Duty. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not much for those games, so I don't know. Oh, I'm just looking at chat to see if anybody knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure the trailer's still up on YouTube, but yes. He gives like this long monologue about you're gonna pay and we'll teach the greedy, and then he shoots the window out and just hucks his ass right out there. <laughs> oh, I mean, Rainbow Six Patriots? Is that what it was? That might be what it is. That's the perfect name, too. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that. That suddenly just stopped being talked about after a while. It's one of those where they realized after it was released, they're like, Ooh, we're gonna get in trouble. Oh, we're gonna get so much shit because these are the guys that are financing our games. I kind of miss when um, 
when when like devs used to be like purposely i'm just gonna fuck around and try to piss off as many people like the guys from postal who i work with because i'm in postal four they still just don't give a fuck and it's amazing well, yeah, post the postal games were fun yeah i mean that's running with scissors yeah yeah so i mean have you played four um yes i got it right when it came out and you fell through the geometry and there was nothing to do because <laughs> there was love one that. one fucking day of the week had been done i just went around pissing on shit <laughs> and then i was like i'll come back in a year when we see what we got <laughs> and now we finally have a release yeah i don't mind supporting them i like their stuff yeah they're they're really great like um i i can't talk about it a lot on stream but they were actually working on a vr <clears> game <throat> for a major company and they got kind of fucked so they were like you know what let's go make postal 4 yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> but um, we need more like that. Oh, have you played uh, the game Carry On? Uh, for the Dreamcast? No, it's it's um it's on Steam. Hold on, I'll, can I? I like I like. Uh, uh, wait, let me make sure. Hold on. The one where you play the alien, you just go around killing things. Uh, no, I, yeah, now I see the one you're talking about. What the fuck am I thinking of that was on Dreamcast? <laughs> you're thinking of, ah, uh, Carrie. It's it's the one that's like, are you talking about the one that's a Carrier. rip-off of Revenant? I'm sorry, yeah. Carrier. Car yes, Carrier was the name of the one on Dreamcast. You play I some awful to, games, my friend. I default to old man games when you bring up titles. <laughs> but have you played Carry On? Because it seems like your type of game. Uh, no, no. I, I, I think I, I fucked around um, in maybe a demo of it, or I played it for a bit and then refunded it. Oh. Um, but I don't think I, I don't think I stuck with it now. Oh, it's so much fun. Once you get the, the hang of the controls, it's just fun to kill things. Sometimes just run around just and destroy them. shit. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Hear the screams of the humans. <laughs> they know yeah, what they no, do. They, yeah, they, they do. They do. <laughs> Speaking of, are you excited about the demon apocalypse that's about to happen because of France? Uh, I'm unaware of the demon apocalypse. It's going to happen. Because <laughs> they're of opening France. up a lead lined sarcophagus, and they're going to open up the lead. <clears throat> what? How is that going to lead to a demon? Uh, are they going to get lead poisoning? Is it full of asbestos? What exactly is leading to the demon apocalypse from the lead? Well, line? people are thinking a demon's got to be in there because it was like I think it, they said it was like 98 feet underground or something like that, and like the entire sarcophagus was just filled with lead to hide the body. So everyone's like, why would you do that to a body? Especially like pre-19th century? That seems odd. Maybe, maybe they didn't want Superman to find him. <laughs> oh no, they're going to release Lex Luthor. Or worse, Bendis yeah, and yeah. he's going to write more of Superman. You never know. Oh, it was under a church somebody in your chat? A, a yeah, it was under coffin? Notre Dame. Oh, I, I don't know. What's, what if there's not a person in there? What if it's just like a funny note? We fucked with you, ha ha ha. I mean, you don't just because they're like you know uh, from the past doesn't mean they don't have a sense of humor. Yeah, maybe it was like a Rosicutionist. Uh, they like to fuck with people back in the day. Maybe they're like, trust me, it'll be funny in two hundred years when they dig this up and they're expecting something. There's fucking nothing in it. That would be pretty good. But hey, if we get a demon, at least it'll be more entertaining than what's going on right now. Other than you know the Ralph stuff. Speaking of, just mm -hmm. what the fuck is it with you finding all of the? Are the, I guess we could call them all rage pigs. You find the really special ones. I don't know. Ralph has really gone off the fucking rails. Like, I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw the streams he's done the last couple of days. Like, he was screaming. He wanted to shoot people and I think made rape threats against Fran's wife. Uh, just a lot of really crazy shit. I saw you guys were talking about that a little bit the other night, but... Like, how yeah, has yeah. he not either gotten arrested at this point or... Well, I mean, it's probably going to be soon. <clears throat> but, like... I'm waiting for him to actually show up at someone's house. I know he's been talking about showing up at your house, and I imagine he's going to meet the face oh, first my, of a gun. My, my house, uh, Gator's house, Flamenco's house. He wants to fight Rand in person. Yeah, he wants to... I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He's he's in a, a spiral. He reminds me um, of Donga. He, he reminds me of... Um, <laughs> he reminds me of... It's like a weird mixture of Christian and Wings. Like I, I don't know what's going on in his head, but like he's he's lo he's just he's in a spiral. He's not going to stop. I, I don't know if it's drugs, head trauma, what it is, but. Well, I mean, I know I, I've had head trauma. Um, I've I've got brain damage from a, fall, a three story fall, so I know it can change you. But if he's on drugs plus brain damage, that boy ain't right. Yeah, and but he's I mean, also a redneck, so. 
but like with a head trauma from a fall, it's just that one impact, right? I don't know how many times they put that lead pipe into his head that the uh, the the pimp from Portugal. I don't know how many times he <laughs> fucking curb stomped him and then pipe hit him uh, to get that man purse. But uh, it might it might have been way more than people are expecting. I don't know. Like there's a there's a picture of him where he's yelling at the camera and it, it, it like it looks like uh, he's been possessed. And I'm pretty sure his eyeball rolls back into the back of his head. <laughs> So we need like, to take that and play like the the music from The Exorcist. Yeah, it's very weird. It's very weird. He starts he starts talking about fucking this dude's wife, and he's smacking the table. He's like punching the table. It's just very weird. Yeah, he really needs to get a brain scan. I I don't think uh, he I think he went with the cheapest. You know, just uh, to see surgery. if there's anything left in there. I think he went with the cheapest surgery he could get over there, and I don't think he would pay the money to uh have them do more like I, i'm pretty sure with like orbital fractures like he had uh, it takes like three or four months anyway to heal so maybe it'll heal up normally but like if he just went for like the <laughs> the beginner's package i don't know what they called it over there um he's probably gonna it's not gonna heal right i don't know i don't we'll see maybe he'll be wearing sunglasses for the rest of his life let's face it even if they were gonna do it well he probably pissed that surgeon off into giving him the cheapest shit possible that he could have, yeah, he might have been like, uh, what was that guy's name? Asante, the guy from 600 Pound uh, Life, you know, the one I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah he, maybe he was like that and just screaming at nurses, and they're like, fuck this guy. Yeah. It's like, I still don't understand why you would go to another country to one up per somebody. That, that was like the weirdest part of that. Cause, like, didn't, isn't that where Andy's from? So, what's the point of Ralph going there to quote unquote one up him? That's his like other home. He can just go there. It's it's his hubris, his ego, right? Like it's that narcissism that does him in. Um, Andy Warski, well, you know, had wanted to go uh, to his his homeland, you know, where his, where his family is, his relatives are, and uh, Ralph is like, "I'm so rich, I'm gonna do it." Uh, and then he flies out there and he gets beaten up in a back alley, gets his purse stolen, and has like face trauma for the rest of his life. Gets back to the U.S. and says, I'm going to do a bowling tournament. Uh, gets punched in his face <laughs> by somebody else. All his guests leave early. And then he gives himself the trophy he bought because nobody was there to bowl. Uh, now he wants to do a wrestling event. He wants to do an RV trip. And he wants to do a wet t-shirt contest. Oh, please tell and me I the whole thing with him coming to Tampa is a lie. I don't want him in the city we or in the state. We have enough rednecks. Uh, I'm I'm certain that it's all going to end in fucking disaster. Him and Baked Alaska in an RV together will probably be just a it, it just an amazing shit show. They're gonna get shot here. Like people here, like I don't know if you've ever been to Florida, but like the rednecks here, they're generally very friendly. But if you start mouthing off like a piggy, they're gonna treat <laughs> you like a piggy. I, I do you watch any of the like IP two stuff. Very little of it. The only time I ever really watched it was when I was, oh God, I was actually supposed to meet Failure and Donga and them in Orlando and I didn't go because I was sick. Thank God. Okay. Because like um, Andy Dick has been doing that lately. Um, Like Andy Dick, the actor. And uh, he can't get another like, job. <laughs> well, no, he, he, like I've seen clips of him from like the last two weeks. I don't know what's happening. Uh, he got his face caved in in one of them. Another one, he got his ribs broken Jesus. and then had a gun pulled on him. And it looks like he was injected with heroin when he was sleeping. And then he finally escaped. So I don't know where Andy Dick is right now, but IP2 did not work out well for him. Somebody find Andy Dick and make sure he's okay. Holy shit, it's amazing if he's still alive. I, I, I don't know, man. It was some wild shit. I'm, I'm still trying to... Um... <laughs> I'm still trying to like piece together the timeline of what's going on with Andy Dick with the IP2 crew, but um, yeah, it looked like some wild, like there, there are video clips of him sleeping on a cot in some dude's living room and this chick comes in and like puts a needle in his neck and injects him with something. And nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what she put in Andy Dick. What the fuck? Let me guess, Twitch allowed it or whoever was, they were streaming on was fine with it. Oh, well, no, they mostly like, um, they hop from stream to stream. So like you have like, uh, you know, the main site that tells you know who all the streamers are and then if they get banned or whatever um they just pop over to a new channel and then they have all their like you know donations go through uh it's like power chat 
some some variation of that. So are you going to do a stream about uh, the, these streams, how crazy they get? About IP2? Pro yeah. Probably not. Because, uh, I mean, it, it's like its own world. Um, and I'd have to watch... I'd have to watch like forty hours oh, to get that. caught. I might. I'll probably talk about Andy Dick a little bit because it's so weird. Um, but like the other stuff, like there's this one dude named Tommy, um, who wanted to be like a streamer, uh, but he has like a really overbearing mother, uh, <laughs> who won't let him. Do, she like wouldn't let him do it. Um, it was Tommy's mommy, and uh, Tommy's mommy was always screaming at him and his father. And Tommy finally breaks away from the nest to become a real life streamer. And like he's digging himself holes in the beach to sleep at night. And it's just, it's a, it's really weird. Like the story arcs for these people are fucking absurd. That's, these people are insane. Yeah. I, I guess that's what makes for good, like entertainment, good, good watching if you're going to like tune in for it. Yeah. But like, you know what? Just set up cameras in like a mental institution. You'll get about the same thing. Yeah, but you, you, I, I think without the TTS, it loses a little bit of its. Oh it's, no, it's, no! You it's put luster. the TTS in there and make it more yeah. entertaining. That's what you need. You need the TTS. That's the that's the winning thing. Nurse, I'm hearing voices again. No one tell them. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Yeah, there you go. Let's see. Okay, we have a super chat. Um, hey Jim, I imagine before Alice dragged the rage pig through Wonderland of litany he'll try to low tax himself in front of the corn harvester <laughs> <laughs> is she actually going to press charges i heard a little bit of that did he actually do you think he actually fucking did that stuff uh well so the allegation from the dms and then from what she said on the stream right was that um he wanted her to give him oral sex uh, she didn't want to do it she said she usually hung out with him and they drink and she was always fine. But this one time she got drunk with him, suddenly she just passed out completely. Uh, and when she woke up, he said, yeah, you suck my dick. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I didn't. He, he like took advantage. Of it. So he mouth fucked her when she was unconscious. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if she's going to press charges or not. I saw the rumor going around that she was going to. Um, but like he's got a rap sheet already. Like he's a felon already from just punching a cop. And then with the revenge pornography charge, like it, it would be bad news if she does. See, I was wondering why people were calling him felon. So he, so our smart little piggy decided he wanted to punch a cop. That sounds about right. For him. <clears throat> yeah, this was back during Gamergate. Um, around that time, like 2014, 2015, he got drunk in public and passed out on a bench. And a cop went to wake him up. And he immediately sat up and swung a punch on him. Uh, <laughs> and that sent him away to jail for like a year. Um, and then, you know, the whole revenge pornography thing where he uploaded his own porn tape, uh, he got a one year state sentence for that. That's why if you look, uh, if you look him up on uh, Wikipedia, it says convicted sex offender. <laughs> and now you've got Alice saying that, uh, oh yeah, yeah. You know, he molested me, raped me, whatever. Um, so it's, it's like a, it's a dark timeline for Ralph right now. Really quick. Somebody asked, what do you think of the anime space adventure Cobra? I, I don't think I've seen it. I guess it's another one they want you to put on your list. <laughs> yeah, I've got like a backlog of so much. I Usually I read more than I watch, but um, I, I guess I can check it out. So, all right. We're, we're not even halfway through the year. Let's if, if you got to give a guess on what's going to happen to Ralph, and I know probably everyone's sick of hearing about him, but I'm curious. What would you think by the end of this year that's going to happen to him? Honestly, what I think is going to happen? Um, I think he will get into some kind of legal trouble that'll probably put him in jail. Um, or I think there'll be like a separation arc with the woman he's currently with. It, so yeah, like legal trouble, separation, and possibly a falling out with America First and Fuentes. Like one of those is going to happen. Those would be my three best guesses. But I, I, I it's so unpredictable because he's so out of control. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, to be honest. I'm kind of surprised they haven't cut him loose right now with all the allegations and everything going on. You'd think they'd, they'd want to be as far away from him as possible. Uh, well, my theory with um, with like Fuentes is I think uh, he wants to build Cozy TV up as like a video platform uh, that lets pretty much anything happen. 
so that he can then sell it later on to an interested company or like a venture capitalist for a couple million bucks and just walk away from it. I mean, it would be the smartest thing, but wouldn't Ralph make it where people aren't going to want to go near there? Um, well, I mean, you know, he brought in Destiny. He brought in um, Hazel or Hayes. I don't know. Some other lefty Twitch guy. Um, they've got more right wingers coming in, too. So I think it's just trying to build up a whole variety of shit. And maybe he sees like Ralph as like a sideshow that's beneficial at the moment. But I mean, if Ralph keeps making death threats about wanting to shoot people and calling himself the cozy assassin, <laughs> um, that's probably going to cause issues for him later. That is the single gayest assassin name ever. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. I'm the cozy assassin. I make you guys comfortable before I kill you. See yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know what I don't know what's going through his head. It's just um, he gets really mad so easily now. Um, like he he went on a diatribe for like ten minutes. He got so angry on his show, uh, he started screaming about how he was going to spite people by going on a jog. He's like, I'm going to spite walk for two miles. And then, of course, what does he do? He doesn't go on the walk. Instead, he drives to Washington, D.C. to eat bacon. So, like, I don't know what the hell is going on. He realized he had to move his legs, and he was like, no. That, that's more than I thought. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, he just gave up. He's like, fuck it. Yeah, I, I didn't know if he had actually went on the jog. I heard about that, and I'm like, that's that's supposed to spite people? You getting healthy? Man, you dumb. Well, yeah, like he promised. He said, like, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to go do this, this two mile walk. And I'm going to, I'm going to teach the A-Hogs a lesson. I'm going to post it up on my Twitter with my uh, Apple watch, uh, using some feature on that, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but then he never, ever did. Wasn't he and Joshua Moon supposed to be in like some weight loss thing? And like Josh is still <laughs> weight, losing weight. And Ralph is like magically gaining that weight. Like he's getting that weight from Josh. I think him, Josh and PPP did like some kind of weight loss thing lost thing but i think they all just ended up eating pizza I, I didn't really i didn't really follow along with it so i don't know who won or lost this fucking thing but yeah i do believe they were in a weight loss competition together that well i know josh i've watched josh is like mad at the internet thing and he has talked about actually losing weight like for an entire year which is pretty good like no no hate to anyone that actually does it i went from 350 to 160 pounds shit is not easy but, okay, but am I, am I am I right about the pizza thing? Because I could have sworn that's all that the three of them did was was they got into a weight loss competition, and then it became about who gets to eat pizza when. Yeah, Josh does talk about like after his stream, he go he doesn't eat for an entire day, so that he so he can next day go eat pizza. Right, because it's the healthiest food there is. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna go eat pizza, you're gonna be doing a lot of running afterwards. Sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. Sure. Why not? But I think I, th I, is it true? Like I saw a little picture of Ralph's tit. Please God tell me that was Photoshopped and that man doesn't have like six tits at this point. No. So he was, he was screaming about Rand's wife. Right. Um, and calling her fat and saying how ugly she was. And he's like, well, yeah, let, let me compare my, look at my gut. And I think he only meant to show his stomach. Uh, but he lifted his shirt up too far and he's got a tit. He has tits growing out of his tits. You know, like how some people have like a double or a triple chin. Those are his breasts. It's like flapjacks on top of each. other. I've never fucking ever seen this biological anomaly before. And I saw uh, like people commenting saying, Hey, I'm a, I'm a fat guy. I'm obese. And I don't, I don't understand the physiology of what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> yeah. Like I've seen a little bit of his body and I wish I hadn't. It's really weird. Like, I know there are some people who's like the weight is not in the arms and legs and it's on the front and stuff. Oh, this is so, I mean, yeah. I, Andy, last night was, or when I was on Kino, was trying to say, it was like, um, what did he call it? Couch disease. He meant, <laughs> cush he meant Cushing's. Um, I mean, it is kind of like classical Cushing's where all the weight's kind of like in the, you know, the torso and the body and the front. Uh, but I've never seen breasts like that. I've never seen. I've never seen multiple udders stacked on top of each other. It's like a video game glitch, right? <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, somebody broke the boundaries. I don't understand what the hell is happening here. You know how they talk about like um, elder gods and you know, like Cthulhu stuff. Like if you look at them, your eyes explode in fire because you can't comprehend them. Like that's what it is. It's like looking at a fourth dimensional creature. 
It's like you're trying to process what am I looking at? Oh, so he's a real life Ubisoft character. Yeah, essentially, yes. People are asking, did you ever get your money from Susan? Yes, yeah. So I did the um everybody gave me shit. They're like, oh, the weather streams, that'll never work. Uh it totally worked. Yeah, I got remonetized doing that. I, I put up weather videos uh that I narrated myself and I did little MS paint drawings in and <laughs> yep, absolutely one hundred percent worked. Oh, Jay didn't help you with those. Nope, that was all me. I was uh, you could tell by the fantastic <laughs> art. So here's something. With the way Ralph keeps going after Jade, when are you actually going to let her go after him? Because I imagine that's going to be the most fun shit show ever. Uh, well, Ralph is like, I, I, the way I look at it is, I mean, a, a, anything's fair game. You can laugh at whatever you want to laugh at. And um, Ralph has this thing where he likes to go after like any family, right? Like if you've noticed that, I don't, maybe you haven't, but. Um, anytime he gets into an argument with somebody, he'll go after their wife or the kids or whatever. Um, I like I don't I, I don't feel like I need to, because um, Ralph is such a fucking trash fire that there's just enough material there. Um, and to be honest, Jay just doesn't give enough of his shit to care. Has she seen anything that he said? Because I know he's been acting. He's been showing her a picture. I don't know if that's actually her. But yeah, no, that was that was a picture. Yeah. She's pretty. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about about her. Uh, well, he was, uh, you know, he was uh, upset about the eye thing. Remember I told you it was like eye rolled in the back of his head. He's like, oh, you want to talk <laughs> about my eyes? Uh, you know, Asian Asian woman eyes, right? Um, and then I asked him to compare tits and he wouldn't respond to that one. Yeah, I did uh, see that tweet. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, she's, I, I don't think she gives a shit. She doesn't, she's off in her own world doing her own shit. Um aside from helping out on some art once in a while she doesn't really fucking care so i know he's called her a cam whore and i i'm curious has she actually ever done that you don't you don't have to answer if you don't want to but is he just talking shit which i figured he probably is oh my god no uh no she had a youtube channel where she did like outfit of the day shit oh that's not cam whoring well there, there was no only fans at the time <laughs> so you know i i don't know what to tell you but um no she he, he has this habit of like saying shit and then like i think the best example of it was when i went on with mundane math he was like oh jim you're a doxer and i asked him like okay give me an example and he had nothing he's like oh jim you do this stuff i was like okay give me an example he has nothing like that happened five times uh during that entire conversation and then he was he went on he's like oh jim uh jim 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 you've got 182 or 82 uh duis and I was like, no, I, ha I had a DUI 20 years ago, Ralph, you know, <laughs> and, the, you know, I, I, and that's a, a little youthful indiscretion and I learned from it. Um, so it's, it's really like, he'll just throw shit out to kind of see what sticks and then hope something comes from it. Uh, but with like Ralph, you don't need to like throw bullshit out because it's just everything he does is up. It's just up there, out there. And you could just pick it apart at your leisure. I mean, all the stupid shit he says and all the stupid shit he does is just right there. He just really wants to be you, so he's self-projecting. I, no, I think he wants like a surrogate father. I don't, I don't know what weird kind of parasocial psychological shit's going on well, with him. Well, didn't uh, uh, Sargon kind of the same thing with you? Like he wanted you to be <clears> his <throat> daddy or his bestest best friend? But, you know, I mean, Sargon had his own issues, but nowhere near as bad as Ralph. <laughs> like nowhere near <laughs> like it's nowhere near this sargon never flipped out like this like i mean you know sargon and i went back and forth but um this is i, I don't think i i don't think i've really interacted maybe ross outdid this a little uh but aside from like ross i don't think anybody's had this much of a meltdown please tell me ross is in jail uh no but one of the dudes that wanted him in jail ended up getting arrested for child pornography what so one of the guys, I know, right? It's fucked up, isn't it? Yeah, one of the guys that was adamant about putting Ross in prison for um, this, like he, he hated him, uh, turned out to be uh, raping his sister and got put in jail for like 30 years. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. It's fucked up. Oh, uh, why do these people, why are these people allowed on the net? I, I don't know. I don't know. Internet is just fucking weird. Although I didn't see Chris Chan fucking his mother coming, but one of my co-hosts did. He made that joke 
like several months before it ended up <laughs> happening and he hated himself for it. I, uh, yeah, I, I, and like Chris's description of it, it's not a pleasant fucking description of it. Yeah, I don't think any kind of description would have been pleasant, let's be honest. Well, no, it's just he was very, I, I won't go into detail again because of Twitch, but um, it was the, uh, he was just very proud of himself. I, let's put it that way. He was very proud of himself when he was describing what he had done. And it's just horrifying. Well, do you think, um, do you think he was put up to it? Or do you think he did it on his own? Because, like, I know that's been an argument oh, no, that I, that girl no, put him I, up I, to I, it or... I don't. I don't believe he was put up to it. I think that was that was all Chris. I think that was all Chris. Once Daddy Bob was out of the way, it was time for a new lumberjack to come into town. <laughs> oh God! And I'm going to answer someone's super chat. I like cute little guinea pigs. Ralph would not be a pet of mine. My guinea pigs are good boys and girls who know how to go potty where they should and not scream like retards. <laughs> there you go. I have four little guinea pigs, and now they're trying to compare them to Ralph. Don't be mean to my guinea pigs. Yeah, no, Ralph, Ralph is the, it's the difference between a guinea pig and a rage pig. <laughs> At least when a guinea pig squeals, you know they're hungry or they just want to be held and loved. Yeah, when Ralph squeals, it's usually in a fit of rage as he punches his table, talking about another man's wife like he did last night. Think we'll get him, think we'll get him mad enough at one point to see him break the table? I don't think he has the strength to. Has Ralph ever won a fight? Answer, no. <laughs> uh, he lost to the cop. He lost to the pimp in Portugal. He lost to the guy in the bowling alley. And he lost uh, to Digibro and his roommates when he tried to break into their house. Oh, there's I not remember one... seeing that. He yeah, got his ass there's... beat. Exactly. There are four fights of Ralph's, and he's never walked away the winner once. Is it true that Ralph um, stomped on the guy's head in the bowling alley? Do you know? I know people have been talking about there's video of that out there. <clears throat> uh so allegedly um okay well here's what i know so uh the guy elbows ralph in the face right mm -hmm. and then they drag him around the corner and ralph goes around the corner uh and you hear the dj saying he's getting his ass kicked and other people are saying he's getting stomped and ralph comes back and talks about stomping the guy and then chaggett says oh i filmed it all and ralph's like oh really his voice kind of pitches up Oh. Um, and if you look at the original video, when they zoom in on Chaggett's phone, he recorded a minute and four seconds. But when Chaggett released the video to the internet, it was only 20 seconds long. He, so, oh man, so, I wonder if he's got the uncensored. So 40 seconds of what happened that was off camera that Chaggett would only have the footage of uh, disappeared. Oh, like I don't want to see anyone get hurt, but. I would imagine that would actually be the thing to get him in jail again. Well, the guy that uh, that was in the altercation went on Jesse P.S.'s show and said that, uh, you know, because he, he wasn't going to press charges because he'd get charges pressed on him. True. Uh, but he did say that Ralph stomped on his head. He's you like, know, yeah, they held. Ralph he doesn't said, want to be the only one with brain damage. Yeah, they he said they held him down and Ralph kicked him. Okay. Uh, but. You know, I, those bowling alleys probably have CCTVs, so I don't, I don't know, man. Someone's going to leak it at some point. Something, I'm sure. Chagin will get mad one day and just decide to release it. Who knows? <laughs> Somebody said, sure, Ralph, run after your family, Jimbo, but don't you dare go after his. Also, have you played yeah, he... K, uh, King of Fighters 15? People want to challenge you on that game. Uh, no, I've not played it yet. Um... Yeah, Ralph has this weird like habit of he especially if you watch the Rand interaction, he's screaming like spittle coming off his face. Like you went after my family, you're an enemy for life. I'm never gonna let it go. I'm oh, I'm gonna get you. Uh, but he, he, it's all bullshit. Like he just he wants to go after people's families. He just wants an excuse. So the second you say anything about anybody related to him, then he's got his excuse, which is probably what drives him nuts with me because I'm just busy laughing at him. He doesn't like being laughed at. How dare you? You got to get mad just like him. You're not playing on the right field. Yeah, some 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 dumb shit like that, I'm sure. <laughs> it's it's you know what he has the mentality of? Remember kids, like remember when we were kids and you'd have those guys who always wanted to show they were big tough guys and wanted to fight everyone on the school field? It feels like he hasn't like matured past that. He still thinks he's in elementary school. And he's got to fight everyone. And he's the big bad boy if he does that. 
Yeah, but I mean, his record so far is zero and four. Well, I never said he was good at it. (laughs) He's, you know, four fight or four fights lost. I don't know, Um, because that bowling alley when he took that elbow to the face, he's like, "Oh, it didn't hurt." But the first thing he did was start screaming, "Arrest him!" Uh, And if you notice, uh, the guy that went in there to film uh, the event, Tux, right? Yeah, he's in the chat right now. Yeah, so when Tux went in to film the event, uh, Ralph finally got angry. He's like, "Oh, you're you're stream sniping. You're letting Flamenco watch this." And then Tux, uh, I guess, messaged him to apologize. He's like, no, that's not what I meant to do. And Ralph responded, this is up on Twitter, saying, uh, don't ever contact me again or I'm filing a restraining order. That's dumb. I know Tux said that he was going to send him flowers, and I told him he should send him nice, pretty white roses. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Oh, no, he'll say, he'll say somebody, uh, Tux threw him at his front door. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's already, there's a video up there of people dropping corn cobs on his lawn. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind that. It'd be free food for the guinea pigs. Yeah, I mean, they were fresh. It was fresh corn, I suppose, is, you know, a, a retort to that. But um, he was not, he was uh, not very happy about it. Didn't somebody also give, like, baby diapers for the new baby? Uh, they did that twice. So Jesse P.S. dropped off diapers on a Kino Casino episode. And then at the bowling event, like two different people left diapers in the the bed of his pickup truck. I I don't I don't know. I I, I uh, and they put a sticker on his uh, truck that said something like Cox. I think was what it, and he drove across the country with that before he noticed that. I don't know. I mean, the baby diaper thing. You think he'd be happy about because that's something he doesn't have to buy for the baby. Uh, yeah, I mean that shit's supposed to be really expensive, isn't it? It is. So yeah, I, you know, he'd save some money. He doesn't think like that. Doesn't, no, not Doesn't at all. he think picking up girls, the only way he picks up girls, if he yells, he's got lots of money? Because that's what we're all interested in. Uh, Worski did have a story he related uh, like weeks ago. I think it was on the Kino Casino uh, where Ralph was yelling something about, um, I got money in the bank. All the bitches want my dick. I've got $1,000 at the bank. Women want to have sex with me or something like that. Some really fucking ridiculous line. Oh, a whole thousand dollars. Wow. Oh, I could big buy roller. so much yeah. kitchen supplies with that. Yeah, yeah, big roller. <laughs> high high dollar amount. Yeah, he's he's just rolling in it. I it amazes me that women were willing to sleep with that guy. I'm I'm going to be honest as a woman, it amazes me anyone was desperate enough to sleep with Ralph. Not because of how he looks, because of his shitty attitude. Uh, I couldn't tell you the psychology of the women that were in relationships with them because uh, I just I don't know that much about them to be honest. But uh, I you know I do know he was a, a fan of hookers, so I, you know at least with that much. that explains some of it. You know, uh, pay for the service, I suppose. I mean, there was that trip when they all got together where the original Gunt picture came out. Uh, Coach Red Pill was sitting with him at breakfast. Uh, talking about how some people in the group weren't being faithful or something like that, and Ralph flipped the fuck out over that. Oh, someone got caught. Yeah, it was like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge thing. Um, but I don't think he was expecting Ralph to immediately start screaming about, I love my wife, I love my wife. That man is not very smart. You don't cop up to it like that. Yeah, he's not He's not very good at uh, <laughs> at hiding what he was going for. All right, so... I know people are asking you about fighting games. Are there any other multiplayer games you like, like Phasmophobia, things like that, that we could maybe drag you back on to play with us? Uh, let me see. Let me see what I've got. I've got a. Um, I have my Steam open, so I can see here. Prepare. You know they're all going to start sending you games, and we're friends already on Steam. So, uh, I was playing Earth Defense Force World Brothers. That was pretty fun. Uh, I stopped playing that for a little while. Let's see what co-op stuff that I have on here. Uh, Killing Floor 2, does anybody play that anymore? Oh, yeah, that is so much fun. When it wants to work. Uh, when it wants to work. <laughs> uh, Payday 2. Or no, Payday 1, actually. I like more uh, Payday 1 more than Payday 2. Uh, let's see what else do I play multiplayer on. I've just got... I have Like, I have everything categorized. I have one, uh, like, grouping called Shitpile, which I don't ever go into anymore. <laughs> and then uh, everything else is kind of, like, grouped together. I think I had some of the mall. Uh, do I? Oh, oh, we could all play Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. That's a fun one. I bet everybody would love that. I forgot that game exists. Or how about um, how about Metal Gear Survive? Remember that one? Oh, that's a good one. Is that one even still like 
functional? No, I don't think I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's I'm pretty sure it's fucking not. People are asking um, if you played Magicka, because that would be a lot of fun to play with everybody, especially the um the crash to desktop spell. I don't think I've played that one actually. Oh, well, I guess somebody's gonna have to gift you Magicka one and two and you'll have to come play with us. It's uh you all you play a bunch of wizards and you can just cast spells at either the enemies or each other. And there's a spell that if you cast it at someone, it crashes their game to their desktop. And if you cast it on two people, it crashes your game. So everyone, of course, has to do it. See, I, I used to play like um, the original Dungeon Defenders. I, I like that. That was fun. Uh, Ace of Spades, I put 600 fucking hours into that before that shut down. Good Lord, man. Have you played... Yeah, um autistic on that one. Is... Left 4 Dead 2, that's pretty good. Two that Fortress 2. Uh, oh, um, oh, what is it? Orcs Must Die 3. Have you tried that? Uh, no, I haven't played the third one. It's fun. It's um a little janky because it came from, you know, they did Stadia originally, but they're patching it up pretty good, and it is a lot of fun, and the story's pretty neat. Because the, uh, it... the main guy from 1 and 2 went missing, so you're trying to find out where he went. Yeah, no, I haven't, uh, let's see. Uh, they're asking fan, if you, you said... played Back for Blood. Uh, no, I didn't like that one. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you said Phantasmagoria? Or what was the name of the, the one? Did Phasmophobia. You Phantasmagoria Phasm is its own fun game. The movie, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or no, yeah, the, I'm thinking of like Spoony Let's Play. It, it, uh, is it the one I'm thinking of where you like show up at a location and it's like a ghost hunt? You prepare ahead of time in like the van or the vehicle outside and you go in together? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I have played that. Uh, I just didn't get a chance to play a lot of it. Oh, we might have to have you come on and play with us. I love uh, last time I, <laughs> I played that. And thank you everyone who clipped it. One of my guys got me killed, one of my Asian players, and I yelled, I'm going to do a hate crime. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm still on Twitch, I'm going to be honest. I'm looking for, like, uh, like solid multiplayer stuff. There's a new one that just came out called uh, Midnight Ghost Hunt, and you it's it's like Prop Hunt, where, you know, one team plays the ghost, one team plays the, um, the hunters, and after five minutes, the ghosts get superpowered, and the hunters get to run for their lives. Oh my god, I'm looking through this shit uh, of stuff that I haven't played in forever. Last played uh, November 2013. Uh, Guns of Icarus Online. Oh my uh, that... god, it's been years since I played that too. Yeah, the airship one. Yeah, that's... Uh, I don't even know if that's still fucking playable at this point. Uh, was Monaco multiplayer? Last played 2014. Oh fuck, Natural Selection too. I used to like that. I don't think that's even up and running anymore. Yeah, you're asking me all these multi like all the shit I played. I don't think anybody plays it anymore, to be honest <laughs> with you. Well, we could always do Left for Dead too. That one's always a fun one. That one's never dying. Yeah, yeah, that's one you can always jump into. Oh, people are asking me, am I 420 friendly? Um, most of my friends get stoned. I I can't because of uh, head trauma. But I mean, I I like edibles every so often. But you didn't hear that from me. I'm a good girl. Let's see. Just to yeah, I mean, whiskey I, I, in my, my <laughs> closet. <laughs> uh, no, like, yeah, I've, I've got a decent amount of, like, um, multiplayer stuff. Yeah, if you're just ever in the to... mood, just send me a message. What about, okay, people are asking Dead by Daylight. Uh, no, I was, I'm not really a fan of that one. Yeah. Spots For some reason, it, it just isn't, like, you know, like, the Friday the 13th one, Dead by Daylight, uh, you know, I don't know. It just doesn't click for me. Yeah, I, I see with me, I like a lot of like I like co-op games. Like I played that game. We just I just finished recently recording the It Takes Two game, and that's actually surprisingly fun as I'm yelling, just get the fucking divorce. Because you're supposed to be two married a married couple that's getting ready to divorce and your kid finds a magic book that makes you go through with this, all this shit to find out you still love each other. And it's just like burn the fucking book and get divorced <laughs> just to spite the damn thing. Uh what was the old one? Uh, the one where you go to a dinner party at an apartment. It was like uh, really terribly polygonal. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, not save the date. What was it? it? It's it's the one where if you make an insult, they will facade. facade. That's it. There we go. Oh, that one is hysterical. It's a great game. That facade is a great. That needs a remake, an HD 4K remake of facade. I love speed running it and just telling them to go fuck themselves, and they close the door on you instantly. 
<laughs> the shit you can do in that game is just fucking phenomenal for the the time that it was uh it was good stuff. And you can even uh you can even change around the um the files in there to get them to say really random stuff. It's really funny. Uh let's see. They're saying try twelve minutes, it's similar to facade. I, I did play twelve minutes. Is that that's yeah. Uh that's the one that just almost solely takes place in the apartment. I've never heard of it. Right, is that the one I'm thinking of? Oh, I mean, Chad will be able to, yeah. uh, I guess, corroborate that or not. Um, oh, God. I, I want to talk about it, but I'll spoil it if I talk about it in the way I want to talk about it. So Go I ahead. It's fine. If they get mad, then they get mad. I don't care. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, let's play this game. Um, oh, oops, you fucked your sister. Game over. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It sounds like oh, gone you, home. You're, you're fucking your sister. Game over. Waka, thank you for your money. No refunds. Is that the game we're talking about, Chad? Is that the one I'm thinking of? That's the fuck. They're saying, wait, did William Defoe voice in that? Is he fucking his sister in that game? That why did Yeah, that's the ending of 12 minutes, is you're fucking your sister. Somebody had to write that. That's like when I played um Gone Home because I thought it was everyone kept telling me it was a horror game, and I wandered into the ending of the sister running away and all that shit. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, the sister just seems like a bitch. What else happened? And somebody goes, you just beat the game. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I just like how it's like, oh, I got to survive in my apartment. All this crazy stuff's going on. Oh, oh, I've completely forgotten that I'm banging the shit out of my sister. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Roll credits. Dev, do you need some psychological help? Because <laughs> it sounds like you do. Yeah, they're saying, is William Defoe the guy fucking his sister? I can't because I might play voice... that. <laughs> I can't remember who the voice actors were in it, but I, I've spoiled the whole thing for you now at this point. They're asking if you play Crusader Kings. I might have a long time ago. I, I read the dates on the shit that I was playing, like 2013, 2014, <laughs> 2015, so probably, yes. Oh, no, they said you have to play Roblox with everybody. Oh, that <laughs> is probably not going to happen. You're not going to get to that level of autism. No, I'm surprised Roblox has lasted, to be honest. There are a lot of kids in this world, and apparently a lot of pedos, because apparently they, they were using, from what I understand, Roblox to get a lot of kids. Well, yeah, I always figured this in, like, Roblox, like, I, I, the age range I think of, if you tell me Roblox, is like 8 to 13. Is that about right? Am I right, chat? Or is, it, is the demographic changed on Roblox? I mean, that does sound about right. It, it, from what I've seen, I've never played it, but it sounds like a, like a little kid's game. Like, I get Minecraft being for older autistic people. <laughs> Trying to be nice. Somebody in your Twitch chat's like, no, it's for 8 to 80. Okay, well, maybe I'm wrong about Roblox, <laughs> that chat. Little old grandma playing Roblox. Yeah, there you go. I, I guess I've been I, I, I've been taught a lesson. Oops. Okay. I know my nephew plays it, and he's seven, but his dad also, you know, makes sure he doesn't go near all the spooky and scary oh, I think no-touch people. Somebody in YouTube chat, I think, said it best, uh, Spoonie Samurai. They're like, Roblox is ages uh, five to pedophile. <laughs> that's perfect. So I think they, that, yeah, I think that's the age range. I think they got it. They nailed it down. They said they want your secret channels. That sounds sexual. Stop it, guys. Oh, they're secret for a reason. Yeah, I can't just give them away. They're not secret when you get banned off one of them. <laughs> oh, that's true, too. So, okay. We know you have... You have had the fun of dealing with a lot of groups. What is the craziest group you've ever had to interact with? I'm curious. Uh, the craziest group? Yeah, because I know you dealt with like the furries and stuff like that. I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it all kind of blurs together at this point. Uh, like, I, I guess I, the weird thing was like furries, uh, even when I was doing like furry videos, making fun of them, um, seem to enjoy it <laughs> in a weird way. Um, and like, even with a really dark shit, like the Kira leak stuff, um, seem to get mad about it. Uh, I'm trying to think of like what, what group specifically got the maddest. People are asking the... about the baby furs. Yeah, the baby first might have been the ones that got the maddest. Um, 
didn't you find out like one of them was like lying to the government and stuff like that for disability and stuff? Uh, she was some chick from England, I think. I'd have to go rewatch it. It was one of the Deviants videos. Um, that was right around the time of, I think that was just before I ran into Ross. I mean, I think I, I you know, like, I think the thing that made me the angriest outside of like the uh, the Kiro stuff was that one dentist video I did, uh, where the dude was strapping kids down and then trying to save money and bill insurance by not using Novocaine. So he'd, he'd do dental work on five-year-olds without Novocaine and rip stuff out and cut their gums up. Um, that was pretty fucking horrific. Yeah, I remember that video. That angered me because I had a dentist similar to that that strapped me down when I was a kid. Actually, you probably wanna, you wanna, from him. You want to know the ending to it? Please tell me he's in jail. Nope, he got away with all of it because uh, they found him to be crazy enough that he couldn't be uh, held accountable. Was his uh, license at least taken away or is he still practicing? No, he doesn't practice. But um, there no justice on that one. That's so fucked. I hope the family sued the shit out of him. I, I think they tried, but uh, he he again tried to use the "I'm too crazy to sue" thing. I I don't know. It was it was. I looked in on it uh, years later, and it just it, nothing ever really resolved with it. That's so fucking it, crazy. Well, he knew what he was doing. I mean, it was just to yeah. save. It was I'm not saying corners. he's crazy. I'm saying the situation is fucked and crazy, and those kids are going to be scarred for the rest of their lives. Yeah, because they're never going to trust a dentist again. I mean, who's going to, like, hey, that must be horrific. Yeah, he just needs to strap him to body boards and tell, oh, we're going to use Novocaine or gas or whatever, but it was all fake. You know, wasn't, it was, he in, a... wasn't he in Florida, too? Yeah. Yeah, he I, taught I a bunch. So, yeah. He taught the dentist that I I went to when I was little. Yeah, they uh, it does fuck with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, because it was a it was a big scam thing, and he made uh, he made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it. Um, and parents would complain. I think it finally came to light because one of the nurses turned in the records uh, that showed that he was doing it. Well, it's good that at least one of the people working there had a soul. Fuck the rest of them for knowing and not doing anything. Yeah, I think a lot of them turned a blind eye to it. If I remember right, again, it's been a while, but if I remember right, one of them turned him in. Okay, so I have a question, and I know a couple of people have asked this. There's a rumor that you used to work in the teaching field. Is it true? Uh, no, I went to, I actually just talked about this on the podcast. Um, I went to become a teacher. Um, this is why I really think that when you go to college, <laughs> this is my advice to anybody. Right? Well, two things. Uh, one, get your generals done um, at a community college. You know, get that associate's degree because it's cheaper. Don't don't get suckered into paying for it at a four year to get that. Um, but the most important thing is whatever your fucking career you're thinking of, um, job shadow it uh, for like two weeks before you even sign up for the first fucking class. Because I went all the way up to practicum uh, before I saw the reality of what it was like, and um, uh, it was awful. So we had kids that couldn't read or write, and this is third grade. So like, there's this educational theory that um, if kids can't read by the third grade or can't write by the third grade, uh, that to fix that will take years and years and will put them at a detriment and you know put them behind everybody else. And uh, high school graduate or graduation rates will be lower, uh, chances of getting into college will be lower. It's this whole fucking thing. So I'm I'm doing my practicum in the third grade with kids that are writing numbers and letters backwards. Um, and just doing terribly, you know, and the idea was, well, why don't we do like an after school thing? We can get some teachers to volunteer. We can help kind of bring them up. So they're, they're not behind, right? No, we can't do that. Sorry. That's not acceptable. And then I get to sit on a meeting where they're talking about how they're going to spend $10 million on purchasing iPads for the kids and then on millions of dollars more to get proprietary software for the kids. But none of that's going to teach them how to read or write. It's all just extra bullshit to keep them distracted and then hearing about how they really have quotas like we have to pass this many black kids this many white kids this many asians um and it doesn't matter and the mentality was uh it's somebody else's problem let them deal with it when they get to high school and i was like i i can't be fucked with this i, I just i quit at that point i went into the um <laughs> i went into the academic advisor and uh, I said, how many how many credits do I have towards a bachelor's? And they're like, well, you you have more than you need to get a bachelor's right now. 
So I just got a bachelor's, a general bachelor's. So if I wanted to go ahead and like get a specialty for something, I could do so really easily. But um, I just, I you know, it was talking to another guy too, whose wife was like a kindergarten teacher, uh, you know, because I told him my concerns about this. And he's like, yeah, she, she comes home and cries every day um, because it's like that even at the lowest level. And it's just, uh, it's really fucking awful. I, um, I worked for, um, with special needs kids in schools and mm -hmm. it pissed me off how many of those teachers weren't actually trained for special needs and they just got a certificate. I know every state is different, but here, like they just pay, you know, they just take a test and they can teach special needs kids and the amount of fucking violence that was going on because like a lot of those teachers just weren't prepared. It was nuts. Yeah. Uh, I mean... It was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I wasted so many years and so much fucking money to get, uh, into education. And then, um, yeah, right at the, I mean, because the practicum is a finish line. So, you know, I, I could have just kept my fucking mouth shut, done another, God, it would have been like seven or nine weeks and I would have got my degree. Um, but I just, I couldn't do it because there's, there, I knew that if I went into that career field after seeing what it was like, what it was actually like, the bureaucracy and, uh, kind of the behind the scenes stuff, not even getting into like all the other fucked up crazy shit, but just that specifically was enough to turn me off. Uh, so I just, I was like, I'm good. I'm done. I just fuck it. I just, I, I want out. Um, and they didn't like that, but, um, <laughs> what are you, what are you going to do? I'm paying you for the service. So we're done. The business relationship's over. You're not getting more money from me. <laughs> I've got the fucking credits I need to get a BA. Just sign the fucking paperwork and let me go. Let me be free. Let Jimmy fly the coop. No, they want to break you. They want you to become a teacher so they can break you. Uh, yes, essentially. Yep. Now, if you were to become a teacher, let's say you, you ended up doing it, what kind would you like work with special needs kids, regular kids? Would you be just a sub? Would you absolutely destroy the school system? What would you do? I, I probably, I mean, it would have probably been something like elementary, like late elementary. Um, I want him to be uh, young enough to still want to listen to me, uh, but not, but, but not old enough where um, they've like, you know, it's just uh, fuck you, mom and dad. You get that? You know what I mean? Like, so there's like this, there's this sweet spot uh, where they're old enough to listen and they're interested, but they're not, uh, they're not too old where they, they, they want me to like fucking throw myself out a window because <laughs> they're bored to death. I don't know. Have you seen some of the little kids nowadays and the shit they say? Well, yeah, I mean, we had one girl in our class, this is third grade, um, who would jump up on the table and kick shit around. And this is like my third or fourth day in the class, uh, kicking shit around, uh, screaming fuck at the top of her lungs. <laughs> and uh, she's like, you can't do nothing. You can't touch me. You can't do nothing. You can't touch me. Just fucking kicking shit everywhere. And I'm looking it over at the teacher like, oh, bro, what are we doing here? And later on, he's like, yeah, we can't. We, she, she's right. We can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like holy shit man can't even put what him a... in time out and shit no he had to call the office to have uh the like the assistant principal and um like the psychologist and one of the you know they had a special term for like security come in to calm her down and get her to stop but then you could hear her out in like the library area fuck you you can't do nothing <laughs> so it's just it's just it was it's just a shit show I'm not saying that spanking kids should come back, but <laughs> maybe the paddle should come back. I, I, you know, I, I think the thing is uh, all the kids in the school system now know that they're in complete control. So they'll just, they could do whatever they want. They understand that their teachers are cucked. Like the that asylum if, is run by if, patients. If the teacher does anything, the teacher's fired. Yeah. Send your kids to military school. Just saying. Yeah, it was, uh, so that's, that's my advice for you. Job shadow. Uh, cause I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's like that shit in any profession you can imagine. So uh, whatever it is, whatever you're going into, whatever you're, you think it's going to be, um, job shadow, job shadow, the shit out of it for like two weeks and make sure before you put that money down, uh, that it really is what you think it's going to be. Okay. They want you to talk to Tux. Do you want to meet Tux, the guy that's making, um, 64? <clears throat> Uh, maybe another time. Like I said, the uh, the this changing of the seasons uh, has uh, 
fucked my allergies up. So we've been going for a while now. So I'm I'm just about reaching my limit on oh, my you're voice. Getting Sargon sleepy. Not Sargon sleepy. I'm getting Sargon sore. <laughs> Aww. All oh, right. I know then. it's terrible. Well, I'll bring you on next time you're feeling better. Okay, maybe we'll do some gaming. Oh, we can we can answer a few more questions uh, if you got like a couple of super chats, and then I'll and then I'll bolt here. Somebody asked, "You think no child left behind was a mistake?" Oh, I think you should leave them all behind. They're all little brats kicking <laughs> shit off tables. They don't give a fuck. So were you so were you and Jade ever thinking of having a kid, or that teach you never to have kids? Uh, well, I mean, we were thinking to have children or having children, but um, because I got sick. And because I don't really know what's going on, I don't want to find out that I've got some weird fucking genetic disease, and then the kid is cursed, right? I feel that would be, I'd feel horrible. So until, like, I get, a, like, a handle on that, I just, I couldn't do it. Do they have any yeah. idea what it is yet, or are they still doing a bunch of tests? They're, they're still doing their workup. So, <clears throat> so I'm getting, like, uh, it's a fucking genomics. They're, they're doing genetic profiling to figure out what it is, essentially. That's, that's where I'm at at this point. Um, so if they can figure it out, great. If it's something easy to deal with, great. Um, but if it was like some weird shit, I don't want to pass that on to a kid. I mean, what am I going to tell them? Hey, you know, enjoy 20, 30 years and then everything's going to go tits up on you. I'd feel terrible. Smoke like a banshee like you do. Um. <laughs> That's right. Just keep keep on sucking them down. <laughs> no, I, I understand that. And I actually think that's that's actually really good of you to be like that. Because I couldn't imagine bringing a kid in the world and then finding out you know, you can give them some life-threatening disease like that and not even mean to do it. Well, It'll no, be I like, just, oh, it, gee, thanks, Mom and Dad. Yeah, you just want to try to be, uh, you know, responsible about it. Uh, I'll see how it turns out. Who knows? Um, but, uh... Well, they said you could always just adopt Ralph's kids. He, they're not going to have a dad. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I that think That came I've from the it. heart. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, no, thanks. I'm good on that. You could just adopt Ralph. He'd be the happiest little boy in the entire world. Oh, God. He's got enough daddy issues. I don't think I could fix that um, <laughs> at uh, at his age. I think those are too deeply ingrained. <laughs> All right. So does anyone else have any more questions before we let Jim, you know, rest his poor throat and smoke another 50 packs of cigarettes? I know. I need to get back to chain smoking chat. You need to throw those. You need to, you know, uh, fire fireball these questions here, and get some games listed that you guys want to see him play, and we'll send him some games so he can get stuck playing games with us when he's not feeling like shit. Okay, they keep asking what you, for those that haven't been here earlier in the stream. They keep asking what you think happened to Coach Ridpill. Uh, what well, I'm gonna guess because of where he's located, uh, power and internet probably went out. So he's probably he's probably sitting in the dark right now with like water dripping on his head. Um, I, I don't think like Azov hunted him down. Uh, but if if somebody caught him and like hung him from a lamp post, we're gonna find video of it like a day or two. Uh, but more than likely he's probably just without internet and power, uh, sitting in the dark in a puddle, uh, really fuming because he can't stream about it at the moment. Poor guy. Let, let's hope that's what happened to him. I'd hate for him to have actually gotten hurt, even if he's being stupid enough to do that kind of stuff. Like, Well, I mean, I do see people in your chat saying maybe he's having uh, Chechen orgies. I mean, he did He did <laughs> put a video up where he talked about how he liked big, throbbing Chechen uh, members. So maybe, maybe he met a boyfriend. I don't know. All right. So we do have a donation here. What's Jim's honest opinion on education now and how the groomer groomers have infiltrated that's gonna get and me how, in trouble and how are we do we need to use a euphemism for it um yeah fuck it how the kitty diddlers and all that fun stuff have infiltrated education and stuff uh if you mean for like setting um curriculum uh as in like uh the things that they're being asked to teach or are you talking about like actual kitty diddlers <laughs> infiltrating for easy pickings I, I think guess. they're I, meaning what what the teachers are being asked to teach. Okay. Um, well, I mean, that's that intersectionality shit. I mean, it, it, that was around even when I was um, going through pre-practicum stuff. I mean, we had you know, we had assignments where they're like, you need to pick out what books you're going to use to teach a subject in uh, this grade level. But it must include this, this, and this. So if you're going to talk about the, you know, signing of the Declaration of Independence, how many transsexual black women in wheelchairs are there in there? And you think that's a joke, but that's the kind of shit they were like. 
So I suppose it's probably gotten even more than that because now it's not just race and disability. Uh, now it's going to be like sex and uh, gender. So it's going to be even more confusing. Uh, I know like there was a push in California and now it's nationwide uh, where they wanted to get rid of math. Like why do kids need to know their ta or times tables? Why would they need to know any of this? Who, who needs to teach them Roman numerals? Uh, instead, let's just uh, teach them how to use a calculator. Uh, and then even beyond that, uh, the whole, there is no wrong answer. Just just show your work. That's all that matters. So, I mean, it, it's curriculum all around is just shit. Um, and so it's it's probably really bad. It's worse than uh, when I was in it. I, I guarantee you it's going to be worse 10 years from now, too. That's just, oh, uh, like I, let's face it. We all hate math, but come on, we need it. That's That's dumb. You can't teach a kid just how to use a calculator. Well, I'm, I'm reading through your chat, uh, or chat. I, I, again, I don't know if they meant a curriculum or if they meant an infiltration by actual pedophiles. Yeah, into it, the didn't, it didn't say in the, uh, in the, in the donation, <clears throat> so I'm just guessing that they meant, like, curriculum, because I know that's been a hot topic on a lot of places, and I don't normally talk about this stuff, but fuck it, go for it. We have Mr. Medicare here. Uh, yeah, if they're talking about, like, actual pedophiles, it's probably going to be harder for them at this point, because um, isn't everything... We like live in a surveillance state, right? With CCTV cameras pretty much everywhere. Um, so I, I wouldn't, you know, I would expect that every classroom has cameras in them now, don't they? Yeah, most of them. Even when I was, even when I was working in schools for a little while, they were they were putting in cameras everywhere, and that was a military academy. Yeah, I, I would expect that that's going to be like the standard. Like, there's going to be three or four cameras everywhere, and uh, they're going to be in each and every classroom in the hallways. Um, on the playground, outside the building, inside the building, in the offices, the nurse's office. No fun allowed for anybody. And I don't I, mean that for kitty diddlers. I mean kids. Like if they do even one thing, you know they're gonna. Yeah, no, that came that came off really terribly the way you said <laughs> no, it. That's why I fixed it. I meant like you know how kids used to pull the fire. We're alarm talking and about we're talking like about uh, pedophiles molesting children and get it, and being stopped by cameras. <laughs> you're like no fun allowed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, oh. I was Woo. about to fix that really quick. Yeah, I know you fixed that. You did. Yeah, yeah, you covered that one up real good. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I think the uh, the camera systems will probably uh, put no like, for the kitty tamp. diddlers. The cameras are going to magically stop working. Oh, that's true. They might. They the cameras might go Epstein on everybody and just suddenly <laughs> not not actually function when they need to. And they'll be moved to like three other schools, like the Catholic priests used to. Oh uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So somebody asked what your favorite sports anime is. Uh, Haji no Ippo, the boxing one. Is it the, Am I saying that right? I'm probably butchering it. Haji no Ippo or the Go one. Would you consider Go a sport? Maybe not. No, it, it is considered, well, in Japan, it's considered a sport. Every When okay. you think of boxing, I immediately think of Baki. Okay, well, here's why I like the Go anime. All right. It's not just, you know, it's not the, like the ghost story of the kid learning Go. It's the fact that he might, like, the whole story is him mind fucking uh, the one of the best players in the world and not caring. That's the, f it's like a comedy. I don't think people appreciate this story's comedy. This kid is using the superpowers of a ghost to play this game. And he casually walks in and challenges, like, the number one player in the world and kicks the shit out of him. And it gives this kid PTSD so fucking bad. That it like fucks his life up from that point forward, and that is the funniest shit ever. If you ever get a chance to watch that Go anime, watch it, and you'll you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. I've I've seen it years ago. Like it's you know the shit that Yugi should have been doing. Fuck it, I have powers. I'm gonna fucking use them. Yeah, uh, essentially yes, yeah. Although that is what Yugi did in the pilot. He was just a murderous little bastard. <laughs> God, I miss when you can have that kind of silly stuff. Yeah, so, uh, I'm reading chat. Hikari no Go. Yep, there we go. Isn't that getting a remake, too? Like, aren't they um, bringing it back? God, I hope you mean it's like an anime and not like a fucking uh, Netflix. No, 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 no. They're doing like a new anime version of it. Okay, well, no, that would be good. I couldn't. Twitch isn't, or not Twitch, sorry. Netflix isn't going to touch that thing with a 10-foot pole because they're going to fall asleep while writing the script. Think about that. They're going to be like, what is this? This isn't fun. I'm going to make this, like, kickboxing with you know a what ghost. They would do? You know what they would do? They'd change it to Othello. 
They'd be like, uh, oh, nobody God. knows what Go is. We'll just make it Othello. No, we'll and then, the, then, in the the rules of it. then in the news reports, they'd be like, isn't this the exact same thing as Go? Yeah, yeah, I can see that happening. <laughs> God, that hurts just saying that, too. Or make it Mahjong and make it just like the computer game version of it. Something like that. Or, yeah, yeah I have no idea. But hopefully Netflix doesn't touch it. No, I don't think they will. They they only seem to want to go after things that are popular. I know apparently years ago they tried to buy Berserk and the like the creator before he died. He's like, fuck no. And thank God he said no. Or they would have butchered it. Yeah, I, I could see them completely destroying that too. Could you imagine what would happen if they'd actually seen it or read it? They'd be like, oh dear God, this is not wholesome. Well, they probably would have liked the flashback to him getting blacked. But aside, from, <laughs> aside from that, they would have spent like an episode on that, I'm sure. But I don't know uh, what they would have done with the rest of it. They would have made him fall in love with him. It would have been become some weird ass love story. That, yeah, I could see them doing that, actually. Yes. <laughs> okay, so they they ask, uh, how far did you get in Common Rider? Oh, I would have to watch it first, wouldn't I? Okay, there's no way Bruckheimer is making a Beyblade movie, and if he is, I need to see how that turns out. Uh, if he, I would watch the Beyblade movie. <laughs> a live-action uh, Bruckheimer Beyblade movie? I'm down for that. You need to have Bruckheimer and Michael Bay working on it. Just for the explosions. Uh, I just love that somebody made Dreadles into an anime, and nobody, <laughs> you know, it's just... <laughs> and they turned it into this big thing. It's great. Sometimes the dumbest shit can become the most amazing shit. I know. All right. Well, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna bolt now and go um, uh, hack up blood because I've been chain smoking for uh, three hours like an idiot. All right. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining me. And next time, you know, your throat isn't feeling like it's gonna die, you can come join us and we can have some fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. And as far as like uh, Steam multiplayer stuff, uh, just uh, hit me up. We'll play some. Um, we'll play something All like right. Left 4 Dead too. I'll reinstall that. Get some mods for it and shit. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Bye, man. All right. Bye. Okay, guys. Thank you all for joining me. You guys are all awesome. I know most of you aren't going to stay. That's fine. Um, I'm going to give you guys the Discord if you want to join up. If you haven't seen it, you know, I also have made a comic. You guys can pick it up. Uh, link is somewhere around here. Um, it, it's stupid. You guys might enjoy it. It's fun. But I'm going to head off. I'm going to be streaming again probably tomorrow. We're going to do uh, either some Switch games or Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is a really fun game that kind of came out from Ubisoft under the table. So a lot of dirty jokes and stuff. But... Uh... Good night.